good when you're gone. I'm so happy you left. It's like heaven without you. I hope you never forget. Forget. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to the Rob Saul Show. We are live from uh, robsaul.com, our Periscope, our Facebook Live, anywhere you want to find us. Welcome back, my good friend, Thank my you so partner, much. my life partner, some, <laughs> some might say. Not too inaccurate. Yeah, wow. Well, uh, and uh, he's back from vacation. Glad to have him back. He he came back into a situation, and we're, we're, we're glad to have him here, Mr. Michael Corwina. Well, thank you. There you go. Um, <laughs> now, if only Doug was here to share this. Uh, yeah, where is Doug with us? Yes, but uh, anyway, we are uh, uh, we're back, and uh, uh, Mike found out last week before we went on air while I was on vacation that Gonzo Podcast had uh, had shut down. Shut down. Shut down shop. There. Quite the sombering news to get onto an airplane with. Yeah, but uh, it's uh, you know. We're, we're going to keep uh, continuing and uh, trucking along here. We sure are. And uh, we're, we're happy that uh, you're following us over and, uh, and you're here with us. And, and, and we're happy to be here broadcasting. And we're still bringing you a fucking program. We certainly are. We're just going to keep doing what we do best. Drink a lot. Drink a lot. And, and book hope- people that are way more talented <laughs> than us so we can get people to tune in. Yeah. And speaking of, uh, coming up soon, uh, Dave Landau is with us and... Uh, we were supposed to have the big exclusive last week. He got signed on as the uh, third mic for the Artie and Anthony Which is show. so exciting. But he had so much work uh, to do after that that he rescheduled for this week. And he was thinking about coming down uh, the studio and we were all going to hang out in Atlantic City. But oh, yeah? Yeah, he couldn't do it. So uh, uh, that will be, he'll be been awesome. Us. We'll have him on video. Uh, I'm going to go be going down there soon. Uh, I'm... I'm might be doing another morning appearance, but if not, I might. If you want to come, I'm I'm just gonna go out and have a dinner there with uh with Dave. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like I might have to be there just so that I can keep my uh my eyes on you, make sure you're not cheating on me. Well, you know, <laughs> that's a uh, that's a might be a wise idea. You know, I'm the jealous type. Uh, I know. Wow. And speaking of, uh, Mr. Douglas Nelson is with us. How are you, Dougie? Huh. And yeah. Douglas Nelson will, will be this will be with us in about five seconds. Yes, ish. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Doug, are you are you there? Doug. Doug's trying. Yeah. Maybe one of his cattle yeah. messed up his uh, connection with us, <laughs> or maybe he's just not excited to have me back. Yeah. Maybe he said he was he missed you last week, so uh, we'll see. Camera to share, we'll do that. microphone, and default, there we go. You see, as I'll narrate what's uh, going on here, we got a brand new monitor so that we can um, cut out exactly what Rob's doing, <laughs> uh, which is uh, fake shit on a, on a monitor visibly during the broadcast. Yeah, now you can just hear me. <laughs> Doug, are you there? Dougie? Douglas? Douglas. <laughs> is the... Uh, we uh, aren't muted. There's a little mute thing next to Rob Saul. Oh, uh, yeah. That's probably probably what it is. Hey, Doug. Are you there? <laughs> Doug? Yeah. Well, I, I heard him. <laughs> I was about to call myself a genius yeah. instead. Well, yeah. That's, that means we would still be able to hear him. He just wouldn't be able to hear us. I don't know. Well, hopefully the Dave Landau is coming Whatever. on this exact uh, uh, program here that we're using. So uh, hopefully, hopefully. That's fine, Doug. You can go away. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Oh, oh, oh I heard he's him. gone. I heard him clearing his throat. Mm. Yeah. Hey, Doug. Douglas? Nope. Dougie, Dougie. It's supposed to be on. Yeah, I can, we yeah. can hear you, Doug. Yeah, we can hear you, Doug. Doug? Douglas? Doug, don't say anything incriminating thinking you're off the air. Yeah, I know. Let me refresh. What the hell's going on with this? Um, All right. So, 
already on the Rob Saul Show uh, post Gonzo Podcast Network era. We've already had the most awkward five minutes of podcasting. Yes. Right here for you. Yes. It's exciting. Hey, Doug. Yes. There we oh, go. There we now go. Now we can hear him. How are you? I don't know what was going on there, but uh, I don't either. Let's see. What are we doing here? What screen am I sharing with you? I'm going to share you with you this one. <laughs> there we go. What are you doing? Oh, there you are in the golden room. Yeah. Yeah. We are. We're like fucking King Tut. Exactly. And his yeah. sidekick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just waiting for uh, uh, Dave Landau will be joining us shortly. And uh, uh, we were talking last week. He got announced to be the uh, third mic on the Artie and Anthony show. And by the way, when Dave comes on, uh, we went through the re- retweets. And uh, Michael and I have picked three winners. Uh, a month apiece they get uh, a free. Uh, wow. Courtesy of uh, not only of, of, uh, of the Rob Saul show, but also uh, Compound Media uh, chipped in as well, uh, and they're going to get some. Uh, we're we're getting out some free subscriptions tonight, Dougie. Cool. Sure By are. the it's way, if you are an affiliate and or employee or staff member of the Rob Saul show, you are not eligible. For exactly. This yes. Yes. That is. Sorry, true. Mike. Uh, yeah, it <laughs> makes me sad. I know. <laughs> Cheap bastard, won't, cheap bastard just won't buy his own uh, uh, compound uh, subscription. No, he no. spent it all on his vacation. I did spend a lot of money on vacation. <laughs> uh, I got a story about our our uh, illustrious producer Brian Clauder, but I don't want to really. Uh, yeah, I don't want to get uh, interrupted uh, when when Dave pops in. So I want I want to wait right, for Dave right. to come on. Come on, but he I told him to call about five minutes after. Where the hell? Is Dave Landa? Well, already, you know, he, he got a spot on the Artie and Anthony show. And he's, His head's too big. Not only did he reschedule, <laughs> he's too big, right? but, but now he's yeah. uh, coming in late. I mean, this guy is uh, <laughs> all of a what? sudden a prima donna. You know what? It's... He found out that Brian's not going to take my place in the, yeah. uh, in the uh, co-host chair, and he's like, fuck that. Uh... <laughs> I like Brian so much. This is bullshit. <laughs> 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 oh man but anyway uh yeah so uh how was uh, your vacation mike we can talk about that mike was in california i was now wow. now what what part of california were you like in the la area close to no, there no no uh we flew into uh san francisco to sfo i don't know why it's called sfo like uh-huh. Shit. You probably don't want to know. Shit fuck ovaries. Shit fuck ovaries. <laughs> I flew right into the shit fuck ovaries. And that was a terrible joke. I don't know why I indulged it. But uh, all right. Uh, I've so. been watching Chip. I was binge watching Chip last night. So um, <laughs> so then uh, we rented a car, which was a fucking ex- an escapade and a half. Because uh, we got this deal through Expedia that said... we. We could get like a PT cruiser or anything of the like for a fucking killer deal. Uh-huh. And we get there. He's like, oh, no, that's our Minander special where you get uh, whatever car we have the most of in stock. And um, right now we have the most um, 12 passenger vans. 12 passenger vans? Well, what do you need that for? I don't know. There was only two of you, right? Yes. You were like, um, is this a joke? He's like, uh, no. No, sir. <laughs> He's like, well, we could give you something. I mean, we could do like a minivan. Uh, no, there's two of us. Oh. Yeah. And um, we called the manager over, um, and he pretty much came over, looked at the screen, looked at us, and walked away without saying a word. <laughs> so at this point, I mean, it was a six-hour flight. <laughs> um, we we were on the the plane. We got there at uh, ten thirty California time, which is um what one thirty here. Yeah, we weren't really revitalized after that big ass flight, so we were kind of over it. And, yeah, and um, so we were kind of putting up a fight because we don't want to uh, be driving around fucking three hundred miles in California with a giant fucking van. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like we're going to hold that thought because I believe we have a caller. Wow, we don't have a caller. It's our guest, Mr. Uh, uh, Dave Landau. Dave, how are you? There he is. Good. How about you guys? Fantastic. Fantastic. May I... Uh, is this working? 
Yeah, you're, it's you're working you're for me. Fine. I Look can at, see that glorious sunburn you got on your nose. Yeah, what do you? <laughs> I do. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is. Uh... My impression of Artie. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, almost there. Yeah, it's uh, pretty good. Just get that nose a little bit more flat. In well, I know. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. We've been doing a lot of uh, texting, but uh, let me say to you over the phone, congratulations again. Give him a round of oh, applause, yeah, definitely. Mikey. Definitely, congratulations, yeah. Mr. Uh, Dave Landau. Yeah, the uh, yeah. What a big gig. Well, fucking deserved. I, man, I was just praying though that uh, that. They just had like it would have been great just to have like a feed on uh, uh, Kevin Brennan when uh, that that announcement was made. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just the pure anger and. <laughs> I'm sure we can all imagine. Yeah, I don't it. know. I don't know where he stands. I can. <laughs> guess, but I don't know where he stands. But I'm also not sure you really give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm gonna go out there soon. I said, and uh, do uh, Mike. Mike and I are gonna come out and have have a little dinner with you out in New York City. A little celebration of something. That some sounds place. a big old that sausage like fest. A plan to me. Yeah, and uh, I love it. I, I like a big sausage fest celebration. Yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, just, uh, we'll just find a, a nice cock, some meat. <laughs> we'll find a nice Italian restaurant. Yeah, so I, we can all we'll like slurp you know up some spaghetti yeah. and meatballs, Lady in the Tramp style. Yeah, we could uh, all. Yeah, like, I think if we oh, work great. really hard, we should be able to find some Italian or Chinese places in New York. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. You I would keep your eyes peeled. But yeah. 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 I'll, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be doing. I, I was talking to Bill. Bill's looking for something, to, you know, for me to uh, for us to come on morning. But uh, I don't think I uh, I want uh, Dave hanging out with me and Bill. I think that'll be another relapse for him if uh, <laughs> he, he hangs out with uh, with yeah, me and Bill Schultz. Right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we go hard. Well, no one will notice his nose is already red. Yeah. Exactly. I was watching. Uh, I was watching today. Uh, uh, my producer Brian was sending me uh, uh, Dave on uh, uh, you know what dude podcast with uh, Robert Kelly and uh, man, yeah, I, I, fucking Dave has this story of when one of the not the last time I think the time before that he relapsed and he got invited uh, for from some Fox News. What was he? What was his position? The uh, friend of yours that invited uh. you. He's in charge of drama development for Fox. So he said, oh. he said we're having a uh, Boys in the Hood party. Uh, so why don't you come over and meet some people? So Landau goes and grabs, buys two 40s as props. He dresses up as Ice Cube and shows up. And everybody there is dressed in suits. And Landau's <laughs> dressed like Ice Cube. For- <laughs> yep. From, from from Boys in the Hood, he thought they were just watching Boys in the Hood. They they weren't dressing. It wasn't a costume party. So, well, it looks yeah, like you won the party. A, uh, wig to make it look like uh, Jerry Curl. Yeah, yeah, Jerry. <laughs> I, and I was just, I mean, I was laughing. I mean, the story just had me cracking. And not only does he, not only does he show up, but then he starts talking with somebody uh, about. I guess he wanted to be on a, in Living Color. You know the the Fox show. Which I you was write. up. Yeah. I was up for a writing job. A uh, writing and job. And it was. Uh, they were uh, people were getting upset that it, the show was taking a while to produce. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it was taking a while to produce. So so Dave uh, says, "Oh, they must be running on CP time." And the woman. Oh. Sa- and the woman says, <laughs> "Right." What does that mean? And he says, "You know." <laughs> Colored people, and she storms off and leaves. The... <laughs> well, the best part was in typical LA fashion. She storms off, grabs her uh, wife. <laughs> <laughs> they grab their small dog. So I couldn't have looked. Uh, I couldn't the kids have looked too. more yeah. racist to these people <laughs> uh, if I had been wearing a clan outfit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so Dave really thought it was a uh, a costume party he was going to. Yeah. Well, and I also thought CP time was, you know, just something that black people called, which yeah. it is, I guess. Yeah. But apparently, <laughs> I'm not supposed to say it. Yeah. But any time that right. my black friends would be late, they'd be like CP time, and I honestly never thought it was an offensive thing until yeah. that moment. 
<laughs> well, at least they stormed. <laughs> at least they stormed off at that point. The next conversation, he would have been thrown around the N word. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> I just thought that's how people talk. Bad time for low patients. Wow. Isn't that well, your friend, your friend who invited you was in charge. Well, I, your friend who invited you was in charge of drama for Fox, so uh, mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He yeah. caused a lot of drama. Anyway, yes. I have, I've never been offered a writing position, so I think <laughs> yeah. oh, that's negatively, we'll see. That is something for sure that you have in common with the Rob Saul Show, where we have one thing that we do, and we somehow manage to fuck it up on air. Yeah, yeah. One way or another, all the time. It does. <laughs> We're proud that even... yeah. I like to blow. I like to blow opportunities. As well. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Just the next guy. Yeah. Oh, Dave would have been a writer on *In Living Color*. Well, we know what one word he knows how to write down. A lot more chances. <laughs> Sorry, what? I said you would have been a writer on *In Living Color*. I said we well, we know you know how to write down at least one word, but uh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would have been. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of interesting that you got in a little bit of trouble for saying colored people time when uh, that word, that really offensive, I guess, word is in the title of the fucking show. Yeah, <laughs> what, what? yeah it is. That's really I don't think I don't think the colored people time offends black people. It mm. does offend uh, uh, uppity the, 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 the liberal white people. Liberals, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, white people. Yeah. Who it tends to bother? It's not oh, really. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just saying. Uh, you know, I was talking about. Uh, I I saw uh, Kumia was tweeting about uh, how Saturday Night Live is so biased and it's not even funny. And remember when it used to be funny? And I said, well, you know, if they say anything kind towards Trump. I said they'd immediately have people boycotting them and sponsors pulling. That nowadays we yeah. we we can't decide what we watch. Uh, liberals, screaming liberals with their sign, decide what we get to watch on on regular TV now because you know Sad but true. We, have, yeah. we have no choice. Which is what, by the way, let me segue that into. That's the great thing about uh, Compound Media. It's a free speech <laughs> network, and uh, they can say whatever the fuck they want. And we give we're giving out three subscriptions tonight. That's You're right, so good three. at this, Rob. Yes. <laughs> that way you can enjoy uh, Dave Landau uh, on the Artie and Anthony show Monday through Thursday, 4 to 6 p.m. Yeah. Eastern right. time. Eastern time. Eastern standard time. Eastern. Eastern. My buddy Bob Levy will be down there speaking of. He used to do a character when I did radio with him called Nigger Bob. That uh, I don't think would fly on. Uh, no, no, <laughs> no, probably not. Uh, the proper term is person of color, Bob. Oh, okay. Oh, you can't and, say and that's the an C-word important anymore, point Doug. that uh, Dave messed up on when he said CP time. Yeah, yeah. Colored people is forbidden. However, people of color is not. Huh. So that's it's really where you put the it. word people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very important. Are they really people? I mean, no. oh, I'm sorry. I was. <laughs> oh, well, that's up for debate, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to make. Ladies and gentlemen, his alone. Oh man! Uh, <laughs> they don't move. So yeah, check them out on the uh, the Artie and Anthony show. So. Uh, you, you've been great on there, by the way. I mean, you're always great on Thanks, there. Thanks, man. But, uh, I appreciate oh, yeah. it. You, you being you. the third I, mic yeah, on there. I'm lucky to be doing it. I'm just trying to get yeah. used to it. It's it's really a lot of fun. And I and I and I mean it from the heart. I'm not just kissing your ass so I can uh, get a guest appearance on the show. I just uh, I think you're. I uh, would never have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, uh, no. But let me be honest though, because no, but... you know I see Kevin uh, 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 Brennan's. Uh, like you know how angry he was uh you know that uh, you got you got to fill in but i remember when i first got the subscription and already went out and you filled in and they said dave landau is co-hosting and i was like I, who is that he's guess, i'm like who's this guy i've never heard of him i said i can't even get a guest appearance on the Artie and anthony show and this this asshole is gonna is guest hosting <laughs> like who the hell is this guy i but i watched it and when i was done i was like holy i, I couldn't stop laughing that whole week you were filling in i remember the first thing that uh where I said, I really like this guy. I guess you weren't privy to this story because I could see like the natural reaction. Anthony goes into the story about uh, H&M, about how uh, they were uh, had to issue an apology, and he pulls up the picture, 
and it has a little black kid wearing the shirt that says the coolest monkey in the jungle and you your natural <laughs> laughter and you just and he's trying to get through the story and, and dave's just got his head down and he's still laughing at this picture <laughs> on there <laughs> i just i just can't believe that that went through ah uh, yeah people that pretended they, they like that's the worst part is when people pretend they don't know what racism is <laughs> yeah. clearly there's nothing wrong with the fact that it's a kid wearing <laughs> <laughs> Coolest monkey in the jungle. All right. <laughs> and Dave's got the one of those. The Spanish kid was wearing, yeah. like, I'm the coolest beaner in the coffee. I'll <laughs> 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 ah. to give my friend it's Alicia just... one of those shirts. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I mean. Like, it's just one of those things where people pretend, oh, I didn't know. I had no idea that black people were ever called monkeys so let's just, <laughs> instead of instead of pretending i'm aware of this let's let a child wear it take photos and put it in a camera <laughs> because that way it's cute yeah it's cute and marketable <laughs> and yeah. even more hilarious yeah in this day uh, and age no one's gonna notice yeah <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, dude, it's I yeah. couldn't stop laughing. And it was laughing at the picture, but more at just the stupidity of how H and M pretended that they didn't know. <laughs> I I really hope that it was one guy that was in charge of like the uh, final editing for the picture. And he's like, you know what? I got a better job, so I'm I'm just gonna fuck up this this <laughs> right. this company and make this awesome edit. <laughs> I mean, I believe it was or- Dave. But I believe it was Dave that said it on the uh, on the Artie and Anthony show. When the story goes, he goes, you know that you know that had to be passed down through a few people, and the uh, final person that just had to hit send was like, all right, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's all I that's all I said was, yeah, the last guy who got it was like, did they see? All right, yeah. whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like, I'm not gonna tell him what it means, and yeah. then uh, who knew that somebody would get pissed about it? Yeah. No. Yeah. So uh, you're you're doing the uh, the Artie and Anthony. Are you so? What are you? Are you going back to Detroit on the weekends and just coming to New York while you're doing the show? How's that working for you? Um, kind of. I'm looking for a place right now. Yeah. Um, I'm staying at my cousin's for a little bit while I I look for a place. Hopefully, I get one tomorrow. Hey, let me tell you from experience, Dave. Don't, <laughs> don't move them in with you and your wife. <laughs> 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 But uh, <laughs> I think if you were about as successful as uh, Dave, your ex-wife would have taken that chance. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, <laughs> I think you'll probably you'll uh, probably be all right. <laughs> oh, I'm looking... Yeah, I, we'll see. We've been together about ten years, so she might wait till I have some money and yeah. then call it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Did you it's now really now once beautiful. now once you signed the contract with Compound Media, did you say to uh, your wife, "Is it too late for a prenup?" I did. <laughs> <laughs> and she said no, and had me sign because she makes more money. Yeah, <laughs> she's coming. Yeah. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> yeah, she does all right. She does. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, you, you, and you talked to, uh, I, I wanted to tell a story I was going to tell uh, uh, earlier, but uh, our, our producer, Brian Clauder. <laughs> yeah, good dude. Really good dude. <laughs> uh, well, he, yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah, he's uh, not the brightest bulb in the pack, but uh, yeah, he's a good dude. But uh, <laughs> he, 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 he comes over and he, by the way, he did a beautiful job. He came down and, and rewired the studio. But every time he was here, he was babbling like a woman about this uh, game called Fortnite and everything every, like a guy came to install the video card he's like all right, all right you, you play Fortnite uh, here's my gamer tag and he's just talking about it and then he kept trying to talk to me about Fortnite and I go I'm not interested no no listen listen he's he's talking and talking and talking so then I go on the the Rob Saul page which he tweets from and I see he tweets to Anthony Cumia he says hey Anthony you're a gamer you play Fortnite and Get then he out. and then he and then he retweets it from the Rob Saul show account. You know, like it's breaking news, like the people that follow it's like, oh look, breaking news, Brian Clauder is finding out if right. Anthony Cumia plays Fortnite. So Anthony Cumia, I could give this guy a fucking hug. He fucking tweets back. Let me let me pull up this tweet where it's at uh, uh, real quick. He 
I'm not even gonna pull that apart. Let me recite it. <laughs> Let me recite it from memory. <laughs> he says. Right. To, he says to Brian Clauder. He goes, M- "My boy, Dave, are you still there?" I am. Uh, I, I think he just on. turned the camera off. Ah, oh, okay. Well, you're on. You're you're on the oh. screen. What are you doing there? I hit a button. Oh. You hit a button. <laughs> We're all dying to know what this tweet there says. We go. So, <laughs> uh, so so Anthony Cumia tweets. Oh, my boyfriend really wants me to try to play that game, but I'm just not into it. Get it? My boyfriend? Play Battlefield, you fruit. And I was like, thank you, fucking... I said, Anthony, I've been listening to this guy babble like a bitch for two weeks about this game. (laughs) And then, then, you know... By the way, Brian doesn't retweet that shit from the Rob Saul Show account. (laughs) You know, Anthony's funny responses. Just so, you know... so, huh. so then he goes, oh, here I thought you were a gamer. And Anthony replies to that with, yeah, I'm just not a gamer. Like, <laughs> 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 And I said, you know, thank God for that response because, I, listen, and I'm being 100% uh, honest here. If Anthony Cumia would have tweeted to him, oh, yeah, Brian, I love that game. This, this, oh, would, be, God. this would be the phone call I would get the next day. Hey, uh, Rob, you see, uh, you see Kumia tweeting? He's really into Fortnite. You should probably bring me on the air. We, you know, Kumia's a real, you should have the whole Fortnite segment, and, uh, you know, I, I can give you some tips and everything. You play, you know, play, and, you know, I know a lot about the game. And I'd have to listen to a whole, like, 15 minute pitch about how uh, we should do a right. Fortnite segment. And, That's too bad. And I'd have to, you know, say, oh, okay, I'll think about it, Brian, with no intention of, you know, following through. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's, it's, I don't know. Either do it's I. A, it's, it's a game, right? It's a, yes, it's a, a free, game? it's a free game. I haven't downloaded it because I, I refuse because I am an addictive person yeah. and I'll like lose my relationship if I play any more fucking video games. Um, it's a free game where it's like a giant multiplayer online battle where uh, okay. you have like a hundred people that are in this giant map and you keep on playing until only one person's left. And if you die, you're out. That's it. You just join yeah. a new game. And after a certain amount of time, the map gets smaller and you got to like go in towards the middle. Is so it kind of like the Hunger kinda, Games? Yeah, yeah. It's games. like a Hunger I wish Brian games would join a real Hunger meets, Games. Uh, yeah. Call of Duty. I can't believe Anthony <laughs> Cumia turned me down. You know, it just sounds fascinating. Well, Good <laughs> Lord, I've got to rush and get that right now. Well, it's uh, popular <laughs> because it's 100% free and Anthony Cumia yeah. can afford to pay for he his can pay, games. He can pay, he can so, pay for Real games. <laughs> there it is. You see Brian, who can't afford shit. Uh, like, I mean, even but, at the like, store, Fortnite. like we'd run to the store to get some more wires so today. He'd be asking random, "Yeah, you, you play Fortnite? Like, just give it a fucking rest with this Fortnite." <laughs> Holy Jeez. shit! Well, how I don't really is play friends. any games at all, so I have no idea. Good. Either do I. You know what? You know what? The only uh, console I have is one of those mini Super Nintendos that has all the old Nintendo games loaded That's into what it. I have. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I yeah. Have that. <laughs> I've and, had a Wii and a 64, yeah. and I really don't play any of them. Yeah. I do bowling on the Wii. Oh, boy. <laughs> Look at you. There you go. I know, right? Yeah. It's something else. <laughs> <laughs> I should get into that. I think I have that bowler's physique. That, uh, <laughs> it's a good I idea. do, too. I feel that that's uh, a sport that matches me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, not the real sport where I'd have to carry a heavy ball, but Wii <laughs> bowling is pretty awesome. <laughs> the only sport I play is golf, and I don't play it well. Uh, well. Golf's fucking hard. It is. Yeah, I agree. Golf yeah. is so hard. Yeah. What? I don't know. Is, is golf? Do you have fun playing golf, Dave? Not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> you just do I've it so you can tell people you golf. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, this is not a dynamite interview with my quick answer of like, no. <laughs> <what's> <laughs> <that>? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> But yeah, really, I suck at golf, man. I uh, I only play because I, other people do. So yeah, yeah. just me to talk to them. <laughs> I really, I but I mean, I've been playing since I was like six. But I suck. You <laughs> see, golf for uh, people like me and Dave, it's fun for about three holes. When you get one good fucking <laughs> swing in. Oh, and, then, and then you're like, oh, I might be getting better. And then your next one goes backwards. You're like, what the fuck just happened? This is bullshit. Exactly. 
Yeah. And then I don't like playing in scrambles, which I'll do charity scrambles sometimes, and people get legitimately pissed off because <laughs> they take it serious. And I'm like, I just thought yeah. we were playing for fucking cancer kids. I didn't realize it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole. What Dude, kind of swing was that? It's so serious. It's like you're either Tiger Woods or you're not. Yeah. Like, there's no in between. <laughs> like either you're shitty at golf or you're a professional. <laughs> that's that's a very accurate that's statement. It. There's two speeds. Yeah, <laughs> I it, I don't know about bowling. I don't know if uh, I don't know if there's a lot of money in in bowling. <laughs> no, well, I don't think my, there's a big uh, bowling. Uh, well, yeah, my dad, big bowling bucks. My dad did bowl in the uh, P, in the uh, PBA back in the seventies and eighties, and I can tell you for a fact there is not much money in it. <laughs> there you go. Did he? Does he have a lot of those uh, perfect score rings? He does. He has plaques, murals, all that shit. Rings. Wow. It, wow. It, yeah, my, my that's looks pathetic. Like that, and he will wear all the rings. <laughs> It looks yeah. where like, all the rings he's blinging out yeah. with his bowling rings. It looks <laughs> like my dad went to high school 16 times. They're imprinted in his wife's forehead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, those rings are made to tune up a lady. But... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's real, why my dad stayed for so long. Throughout the 70s and 80s, there was a lot of women with a bowling ring imprint. <laughs> 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 oh, no news, honey. But, I want another ring. But, oh boy! Yeah. But oh, no one no. says shit because the imprint <laughs> says three hundred. Yeah. There, yeah. <laughs> so, so to the public eye, like, well, at least he was talented. Milkman comes over. Yeah, that's oh, true. Howdy there, <laughs> howdy there, Miss Miller. Oh, looks like on your forehead, your uh, husband uh, bowls a three hundred. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. I see by the bowling pin imprint. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, that one says two hundred. 99 twice he must have been pissed about that one yeah yeah, yeah. i guess he hit you with his left as well <laughs> uh, does he have toe rings <laughs> no 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 i don't think so because he was a super navy homophobe so if anyone went around his feet he'd be like what the fuck are you doing yeah well, Mike. Yeah, I think it was Charlie and cut his eye out. <laughs> <laughs> My dad was like that. He's an army dude who was in Nam. So yeah, yeah. We didn't eat, we didn't eat at a lot of restaurants with Asians for the sake of you know. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. No, <Nope. laughs> get mom a fresh new ear necklace. My, uh, <laughs> my, you know my my neighbor Miss Trina she refuses to eat uh, Chinese food, she says to me, she goes, Rob, you ever seen a Chinese funeral? Never, right? They cooking them motherfuckers up and eating them. I ain't eating them. I ain't touching that Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, more likely you just don't know Chinese people. Been <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not a possibility in the realm of her mind. She just Well, uh, that's your theory. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a Chinese funeral, I guess. Isn't that where they stab themselves with a sword and then they just leave them out in the wilderness? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. and it, it, As far as I know, I'm not cultured. And, well, I mean, no, you might be right, but it's it's uh, even super rare to see because they live until they're 3,000. Yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> they, they are yeah. a very fit people. Well, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I see them come in the uh, the restaurants uh, for over the years I worked at, and they always, you know, drink their tea, and everything's just pretty much just eating broth most of the time. Yeah, it's. Uh, but the stuff I eat is fried, and they just they make that, but they don't have it themselves. No, of course not. <laughs> they're not. They're <laughs> not. They're not eating cat meat and human meat like that. I mean, what do you think they are animals? <laughs> 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 yeah, that the whole dog thing is creepy. Yeah, <laughs> not the one in China, just this place by my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So well, it uh, seems to be the uh, the uh, stray animal problem seems to clean up pretty quick when the Chinese restaurant opens up. So. I, I, it's true there is a stray dog problem in Detroit, and I think that could be fixed. And I love dogs, yeah. but yeah. right, I'm just saying. But you would also love them. Problem. If they tasted like General So. 
Yeah. Now, uh, Dave, are you, That's true. Are you going to be happy to uh, to get out of Detroit? And uh, are you going to look? Are you going to move like right in the city? Or are you going to like move on the outskirts in like Brooklyn or uh, you know? Um, I'm I'm hoping Harlem above a nightclub. <laughs> Harlem. Above a nightclub. <laughs> oh boy, can I stay over? <laughs> it's so weird though, because like everywhere here that like I've heard over the years is bad, like Harlem, Bedford Stuy, all these places. They're all they've all been integrated and are expensive. I don't know how there's a ghetto here. It's too much money. Yeah. <laughs> like if you, if you can afford to live in a ghetto in New York, you should just move anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. House. That 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 yeah. that makes so much sense. It's scary. I have a feeling that uh, just, I have a feeling when I come to New York City to do appearances that uh, Landau with his his wife and kid are, aren't gonna let me come all uh, drunk and fucked up and sleep on the floor like Bill Schultz does. Nope. <laughs> I, <no. laughs> The last person who got drunk and slept on the floor in my home was me. Yeah. Was Which, by the way, going back to that story that I never finished, what, <laughs> Dave, Dave got uh, uh, so uh, uh, depressed about the you know chasing off the in living color uh, uh, lady that he he drank the two forties and that was his relapse. I did. I drank the two forties and I was hammered. And yeah, it was really bad. And we were with a friend of ours who was my buddy's girlfriend. And I was trying to tell her she was too drunk to drive and should come back and sleep in my bed. <laughs> uh, to, to, sleep off, to sleep off the drunkness. But it just came off as me being hammered. Like, go sleep in my bed. You want to sleep drunk. in my bed? <laughs> sleep in my bed. <laughs> just like Dave, you're the one who's drunk, not me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just it was I, I never do well drinking. I remember that started there and next thing you know I'm walking down Wilshire Boulevard dusting off a fifth and then I went and got help again. I think I I think I need friends like uh, Mike Carwina and I think Dave Landau will be a, a good influence on me because I, I'm not really much of a, a good drinker either. The last uh, I mean Mike, uh, you can attest to this. <laughs> he seems to agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite or your least favorite uh, Rob uh, uh, drinking story? Oh man! I'm, all right, all <laughs> There's right. so many. You can't. Uh... <laughs> all right. So hold on. This is the one that I'm most that I'm most impressed with because I thought shit was about to get real and I was about to like slide out the back and leave you in that city. Um, so Rob was drinking um, among possibly other things uh, when we went to um, <laughs> Bob to uh, Bob Levy's benefit. Uh, oh yeah, this is a show. With <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, yes, it's, okay. it certainly does. So um, weird. That would... <laughs> there's so many options that it could be. You know, we're at least leaving. So this is recent. This was uh, I did the. Uh... Oh, this was recent. Yeah, this was like two or three weeks ago. This was like two weeks ago when we spoke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so we're at his uh, benefit comedy show with a killer lineup. Yeah, and he is drinking like a fucking fish, and yeah. I'm like I mistakenly bring him to my favorite bar like ever. It's a martini bar in New Brunswick. It's called Clyde's. Free fucking ad advertisement. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and uh, this uh, place makes drinks like they don't fuck around. Like you, yeah, they're pretty strong. It is impossible to have more than three if you intend to actually walk out on your own two two feet. So um, he okay. tried to get me to uh, keep drinking more. I only had one. I'm, I tried I'm like, to get out I'm of like, here. I'm like, nope. I'm like, nope. I'm not going to do this. <laughs> He's We're so full go back shit. To, no, I'm not. <laughs> and um, so we get back to the comedy club, and he uh, gets a couple of drinks. I don't, even, I don't even remember what you had. You had a beer and a martini. Yeah, yeah. And for some reason, you, you like... You can tell when you're fucked up be, because you just start talking a lot, and as <laughs> yeah. as as the sentences get like like <laughs> look at on look at the smirk on Dave's face. Other, <laughs> <laughs> I love you it. Get louder and louder and louder, and it just so happened that you came back from the bathroom with a story to tell in the middle. <laughs> In the middle of someone's comedy set, it was Colin Quinn. And, and it, by the it way, it wasn't the, it wasn't it wasn't in the bathroom, Dave. I was in the uh, what happened is I was in the green room with uh, with Artie and uh, Bob Levy, 
Yeah, <laughs> and uh, he's gonna make it sound better. I think uh, Bonnie McFarlane was in there. So what happened is the uh, the owner, Vinnie Brand of the comedy club, comes back there and looks at me like I have three heads, and he says to Bob, "Who's this?" He goes, "Oh, you don't know Rob Saul? Rob Saul does a show. He's in." And he turns to me, and goes, "Are you a uh, are you a comic?" And he, he says it with like this look of like disgust. And I go, I'm not a comic. I interview comedians. I do like a comedy ratio. And then he grabs me by the shoulder like, all right, come on. Let's move along and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so then everybody starts laughing. And I look at Bob and, you know, and I don't leave. So we're, we're all talking again. And then he says again, all right, come on. Time to go. And, <laughs> right. and so anyway... I don't leave again, and I'm talking to Bob, and then I see his face, and I just feel awkward. I'm like, I'm going to leave. I said, all right, Bob, I'm going to go sit back in my seat. Now, Bob swears this guy was just joking, but I'm pretty uh, positive that he didn't want me in that fucking green room. Yeah, I don't know the man, but he didn't want you there. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) he didn't want me in there. Yeah. (laughs) So he gets back to his seat in the middle of someone's routine. It was Colin Quinn's. Yeah, in in, in, in the middle of Colin Quinn's set with a story to to, to tell. Yeah, <laughs> and, and he and he uh, he starts off talking, you know, a little bit in in, in a soft yeah, spoken voice, a yeah, little bit soft. So I'm like, okay, I'll entertain this. And then as soon as as he gets into talking about how Vinnie Brand was trying to fucking kick him out two, three, four, four times, he starts <laughs> getting loud, like really loud. And I'm noticing everyone around us just like turning, like like who is this asshole that's talking during a comedy show? Yeah. and I'm just sinking in <laughs> in into my seat like i don't know what to say you know because which by this is the first time i've ever done this but i was pretty fucked up and i I was trying to tell him the story but uh like i know him too well to be like oh wait hold on stop talking everyone wants you to to shut the fuck up like i know that that's not gonna work and uh these uh uh, these uh two guys sitting behind us um one of them uh just 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 goes uh hey uh we're, we're trying to watch a comedy show here and rob's face he was like i i saw him he was like (laughs) you're right i'm sorry I did because he said I didn't realize it was being that loud. It's, I don't want to. I'm, I have comedians on the I show all the time. About, I love comics. I would never want to do that. So once I realized they could hear me, I apologized and said, "You're right." You I know, I'm thought, sorry. I like he looked so mad that someone he didn't know interrupted his his story, and, and, he, <laughs> yeah. and he turned around, and yeah. I thought he was about to like go ape shit. And when he didn't, I was really glad that I that I yeah. remembered that Rob's a pussy. Ah, please. Man, uh, Rob's a polite drunk. <laughs> polite drunk. <laughs> <laughs> what are you hitting buttons over there, Lando? No, just getting calls and then uh, trying to hang them up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is quite the app. I didn't know you would still have <laughs> 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 calls anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't get technology. I'm not good with this stuff. Yeah. So I'm holding it was, up the phone. <laughs> it was the guys from the Rob, the Bob Levy benefit uh, show calling in to tell Rob to shut up. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> yep, we're, yep. we're trying to enjoy Dave Landau. We don't want to hear about you interrupting yes, the comedy. We don't show. Like him, <laughs> and just yeah, there's still always too a good mixture of uh, alcohol and cocaine that causes a bit of aloofness. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you don't have a lot of self awareness, and it gives you confidence. Yeah. So. <laughs> No, I felt like no. Well, we're not confirming that it was yourself. cocaine. All right, yeah. just in case someone yeah. special is listening, yes. we're not confirming that he no. was doing cocaine. Yeah, yeah it's, we're just. It may have been. We all know it wasn't heroin, or he, he oh, came no. back and he was just sleeping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he came back and he was passed like out. God was rubbing his belly. <laughs> so, so I, I was up all night drunk, and then I had to. Uh, I had to go and do it. I did the appearance. Uh, the Bill Schultz show uh, the next day. <laughs> I, I'm well, like that's on no appropriate. sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and he's not getting back to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a pretty good appearance the last time. I, uh, I thought it was a good one, but uh, <laughs> no, it was. It was. I watched. Oh, did you really? I did. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's a, you know, I but I did feel like shit because uh. I, I do remember it because I was like, oh my god, I, I am. I guess I am being loud. I don't want to interrupt, you know, somebody's, uh, you know, people trying to enjoy a comedy show. That's what we do on right. this show: is promote comedy shows and try to get people to go out to comedy shows. And then the guy doing it is sitting there in the fucking front, babbling like a fucking buffoon. <laughs> 
It happens. Yeah. <laughs> but there you go. That's it what... happens to the best of us. You do a little bit too much. Yeah. <laughs> I've I've wrecked cars. You know, I've done so much <laughs> shit. I can't judge. That's I why he I... doesn't drive. <laughs> because... It's best you don't. No, yeah. he shouldn't. I'm a firm advocate. <laughs> do you not drive at all? I I've never I've never had a driver's license ever. Really? Yeah. That's a man who no. does not fight it, his destiny. Yeah. And I, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, no It's kidding. a good that thing. Is, uh, they, basically, your friends just don't want you to have a weapon that's successful. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, you do live in a predominantly black development. You are not above getting drunk and angry at a bar, coming home, and not stopping for the kids that won't get out of your way. <laughs> You are not above that. Yeah, Bob, Bob Levy told a story when he he came down to the uh, uh, to the studio and did a show with us, and uh, I was going to get him coffee, and he saw me walking across the street and picked me up, and we go into my development, and there's a bunch of little black kids coming. I said, "Ah, oh, look at them; they just won't move." And a bunch of little monkeys. In the no, I didn't say that, but uh, but, but Bob uh, told it on air, and he just <laughs> he wouldn't stop talking about it. How I was like, "Look at them; they just won't move." <laughs> Well, usually, yeah, you can expect to see that when you use the word de- development to describe where you <laughs> <laughs> Development, yeah. <laughs> Some people go, this is my home, this is my street, this is my building. You're basically this. Well, is he a, said development, but uh, this it, is a development. Is a it's not a development. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a condo association, and I own a condo in here. <laughs> oh, there you go. It is a development <laughs> of condominiums yeah. for predominantly <laughs> Section it's, Eight. It's a it's a project, if you will. Of <laughs> nah, there there is yeah, no, <laughs> there's no Section Eight in here. I can I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're near Atlantic City, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, man, yeah. It's, uh, I used to spend every summer in Atlantic City. It's uh, it's looking good. Yeah, they're opening a. Uh, yeah, it's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are they open, they're opening another casino near the Revel. Two more. No, they're yeah, they're, two. Well, they're open. They're reopening the Revel. That's where I work. I don't oh, know. Reopening I don't, the old Trump Taj Mahal, which is the uh, going to be the Hard Rock. Did I, did, I, did I tell you, Dave, when I worked at the Revel, I worked at the Revel when they opened up as I was a stage technician, and I, wor- really? and I worked for uh, Beyonce for a month. My job was to uh, <laughs> hold the fan and make sure her hair was blowing uh, during all the songs, and uh, I made about $15,000 that month just working for, uh, for Beyonce, but uh, she, was, she was talking to me one day, asking me about something with the fan, and one of her... Uh, stage uh the the stage director came and i felt my body being lifted and pulled and thrown and he <laughs> threw me and uh he said uh you, you don't get thrown out of shit a lot yeah yeah he gets <laughs> well i wasn't drinking uh but uh, i was i was oh. working but he said uh and it was vinnie brand yeah <laughs> vinnie brand was uh yeah <laughs> threw you out. i thought i told you yeah <laughs> but uh yeah, they. He, he, well, Rob is a munchkin, so it doesn't yeah. take much. He said, uh, "I know the feeling." He said, "You." He said to me, <laughs> "You don't talk to the money." And I said, "Well, she was, <laughs> she was a." What an asshole! Yeah, she, uh, <laughs> I said, "Well, she was talking to me and asking me something." And he goes, "If you were doing your job right, she wouldn't need to talk to you." <laughs> but uh, that was, uh, yeah, that was my Beyonce. Uh, Who are you talking to, Jerry Lewis's road manager? <laughs> <laughs> You don't talk to the money. The money. <laughs> How long ago was this? This was when Revel first opened, and so it was probably in May of 2014. Wow. Yeah, remember when the dude on the Eagles punched that woman? It was just before that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was uh, oh, yeah. no, that was the girl. Uh, uh, that was the dude from the Ravens, but he uh, was a Rutgers graduate. The Ravens. Which, the by the way, I think Ray I... Rice. Ray I... Rice. I... I was talking to uh, yeah when I I was talking uh, telling that story to to Bill and uh, and Joe and I was saying that Beyonce was very nice. It's the older uh, uh, people that have been in show business a while that lose touch with reality because uh, uh, Barry Manilow. You weren't allowed. He, we were told we were not allowed to make <laughs> eye contact with him. The yeah, e- I was told that about Donna Summer when I opened for her. Yeah. Wow, yeah, she's she's dead. So yeah, she's dead. Yeah. <laughs> I guess someone looked at her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, she also didn't have a her keyboardist or the p- pianist, yeah. if you will, didn't have keys on the piano, so <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't really a real show. But you know, she put one on. Yeah, yeah. The last dance, <laughs> my last chance before I'm dead. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> well, why did this? Why would anybody want to make eye contact with Barry Manilow? I don't know. <laughs> it's like a, a stone one. looking at a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> I see the later. fag in your pupils. He's yes. a... <laughs> oh, I wanted to stay. Yeah, he was worried they might find out. Um, hey, 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 hey. He writes the songs that make the whole world. Oh, sing. yeah. We found out uh, a couple yeah. weeks ago that Mike Carina has been to a Barry Manilow concert. <laughs> that was my first concert. <laughs> my mom. Did you sing Mandy? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. How I'm, dare you ask I'm, that? I'm, I'm a Barry Manilow <laughs> aficionado. My mother is a super fan. And has many, really? many pictures, yes, yeah. hanging up. It's she like planned most, on raising a gay son. Like so, she, you know. yeah. Um, <laughs> she loves her kids. Her proudest moments are her solo pictures with Barry Manilow. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I accidentally did make eye contact with Barry Manilow because I was loading a truck and he walked by and he just smiled and nodded. What is this? It's the guys telling you to shut up. I know. Why is that? Let me get out of the. It's Dave Landa. Oh, wait. Who the hell is calling me? All I loud. don't know. Loudly, too. All right. <laughs> oh, there's your email. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. A lot of gay porn subscriptions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, he Barry did Manilow make eye contact with uh, Barry Manilow. That's what happens. Yeah, I was just gonna say. That's so what happens. What happened after you looked right at him? That's why no one wanted <laughs> anyone Dude, to that look That was at Barry him. Manilow's manager. He was starting to sue me. <laughs> but, uh, Your penis turned to <laughs> stone. <Look at his. laughs> uh, but the worst was the Eagles. Don Henley is a complete fucking douchebag. Don Henley. Uh, when really, we, I wouldn't have guessed it, that. Yeah, when we, you, <laughs> well, <laughs> there was a separate theater in the Revel that we'd had to hide in because Don Henley and Glenn Fry didn't want to make any, didn't want to even see us when they came off stage. They wanted to, uh, to, uh, to, you know, they were afraid someone might look Fuck at them or other. talk. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, somebody told me another one of the guys that worked uh, with him at a. Uh, uh, at a different venue said that one time he was walking down the hallway and he looked up and saw Don Henley and Don Henley started screaming and pointing. He's making eye contact. He's making eye contact. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. What a piece of shit. <laughs> Why? Well, I guess Neil Diamond's like that too. Yeah. Which granted he has the right to be, but everybody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like if you could make eye contact with Neil Diamond. Well, Stevie Nicks wrote a song called uh, Sarah, and it was about, yeah. and it was about uh, I guess, uh, Don Henley got her pregnant, and uh, he was just such an asshole and uh, just didn't want the baby to be born that she had a, uh, an abortion, and uh, there was a... That's what that was about? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I have never heard the dude such a dick. I killed this baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the legend. By the way, let me just it. say this so I don't get sued. This is something I read uh, in a magazine, so uh, I don't know if it's 100% true, but that's what I read. I've heard something like that, hmm. but I don't know. Didn't David Crosby impregnate a singer with, a, with his sperm? Uh, Melissa Etheridge. That's how it's done. Melissa, yeah. Melissa Etheridge. Like yeah. Somebody wanted that in her. Uh, David Crosby. I know. <laughs> David Crosby. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah that is. Yeah. You like Glenn Fry. No. You, you no. Yeah. You couldn't pick somebody a little, you know, a little bit better looking. Like, you don't want Bon Jovi semen. You want David Crosby. You want your baby yeah, you to want... look like David Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the problem with Stevie was that, uh, you know, when they did the imaging of the baby, it looked in his eyes, and so, you know, it, it had to go. Well, there you go. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Look at one ultrasound. It's okay, looking at my I face. Children? What's that? 
Does Glenn Fry have children? He does. His son is the new. It took his place in the Eagles. The Eagles tour and Glenn okay. Fry. Yeah. Don Don Henley. Oh. Don Henley's the one that accidentally knocked up Stevie Nicks and. Uh, Oh, right, right, yeah. right. Okay, yeah. Now, does Don Henley look at his children? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like Not unless they like, buy a ticket. It's looking at <laughs> It's in here again. <laughs> <laughs> that is cats even with uh, Glenn Fry. That is, wait, who did you say took over the... Glenn, Glenn Fry's son and Vince Gill took over uh, Glenn Fry's role in the current touring band of the Eagles. Okay. Yeah, you got to think that's got to be a cat's in the. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where'd Dave go? Dave keeps disappearing. Oh, Dave's, Dave's a popular guy, all right? Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Let me check my cell phone for some calls. I I may have someone a little bit more important than you guys, uh, I mean, aka anyone. I mean, Dave's Dave's gotten about quadruple the amount of calls that we that we've gotten in about three months. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 have you have you noticed that it's you're just the babysitter in a mad panic, and I'm ignoring. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I understand now. <laughs> I thought you knew CPR, <laughs> Dave was texting back to her. But <laughs> yeah, I'm like, push on his chest. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> no, it's just random people. I don't know. Yeah. Now, have you, have you noticed that a lot, that you're, uh, you know, since you've been doing more appearances on Artie and Anthony, and then since you've been announced the third mic, you've been getting a lot more, like, social media activity, a lot more calls coming in, or... Uh, uh, definitely social media, but definitely, yeah. you know, there's that. There's also the people who, you know, get a hold of you right away with some bullshit. You, you know, like, hey, I was watching your stand up. I really enjoy it. Oh, hey, thanks. Hey, you know, I'm a comic, and I really like to be on that show. Oh, good. Uh, that happens. Wait, sound, wait, sound, wait. Happens. Sounds like Mike Carina. Yep. Mike Carina was already planning on pitching you tonight. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's. But I won't. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Last uh, last time, <laughs> Bill Schultz called in uh, last uh, a couple weeks ago, and. Not only does he start, Mike Carina's like, well, when can I be booked on the show? Then I start getting callers calling in, uh, asking to be booked (laughs) on Bill's show. I guess guess I'm like that type of person that I get booked somewhere and everybody else is like, oh, they'll book this asshole, they'll book anybody. No, 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 (laughs) no. You're the guy that gets booked on there when it was supposed to be the both of us. And then you was like, well, it's only going to be me this time and next time, and the time after that, and the time after that, and this next one coming up I didn't even tell you uh, about. So that was pretty much me being like, hey, uh, so what about uh, what about the uh, lovely uh, co, co-host? Yeah. Co-partner in crime? <laughs> I, don't think- I think that's worth it. I think you gotta play that card. <laughs> but... Uh- <laughs> Well done. Yeah. Well, listen. I. Uh, I mean, I. Little finesse. I mean, well, I Rob's do... just Rob's just worried that Mike's gonna steal Bill away from him like his cousin stole his wife. Yeah. 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 I, I try to. Uh, I try to hang on to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did your cousin take your wife? Yeah. That's. Oh what, yeah. You that, don't know that story. And we told you. That's what. That's why I told. You, that's. That's oh, what. Yeah. That was the. No, I remember. That was the. That was the yeah. joke I made that you probably didn't get. I guess when I said when you said you were staying with your cousin, I said just don't. Uh, you know, bring them around your wife. <laughs> no, no, I get it. I get it now. I forgot about that. That's an awkward Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> are they still together? They are. She's uh, she's pregnant with uh, her second child from him. The first one, when she was making my life a miserable mess, was born and died. I don't want to say anything about karma, but uh, listen. Oh my God. I'll let the universe speak for itself. Well, Rob, did you look into the baby's you're, eyes? You're uh, you're uh, saying this joke to a proud father. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. I'm a proud. Uh... Listen, I'm a I'm a proud father too, but uh, I'm worried about my kid. I don't care about their kids. <laughs> I'm not saying I. Th- I wish that I wish the young man would have made it, but I see <laughs> <Bob's> point. <laughs> yeah. 
it's uh, it still hurts. Nah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's not a good thing. You know, how long did it make? It? <laughs> What's that? A while, or was it one of those miscarries and things? Uh, she, she, uh, well, I was fighting her in court for uh, joint custody, and uh, right, I guess she blamed me. She still says that I killed the baby because she said I stressed her out by keep taking her to court to see my daughter. So she said, I guess the stress of me taking her to court and I was bringing my whole family in testifying against, uh, you know, what a crazy bitch she is, and uh. So well, she, she sounds lovely. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So anyway, you couldn't keep the fish on the hook there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By the way, that's what I, say. I, I, I should buy my cousin a drink. I, I've been so much happier out of this. <laughs> which, yeah, which is, which is frightening because he is miserable as fuck. Well, you know, after, well, after it, uh, after, <laughs> bef- be- before Mike uh, joined uh, on the team here, Doug knows that uh, right after the uh, divorce, I was, uh, I was fucking this. Uh, this hot twenty-two-year-old that was uh, had an amazing body. This hot twenty-two-year-old black chick, which yeah. is even more, yeah, surprising. <laughs> <laughs> what was wrong with her? Did her? What's that? What was wrong with her? Who the the black chick? Yeah, she was black. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. I was <laughs> Well, it, 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 <laughs> I just wanted to see if you'd do that. <laughs> he was he was sh- setting me up. He was setting me up. I'm right? not sure. I'm not sure if you passed Didn't or failed. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not I sure. Pass. Pass with flying colors. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh. Oh, 1940s pun. <laughs> hold on, hold on. They only fly when you uh, push them off of a cliff. Oh wow! <laughs> oh jeez! Wow, that's true. Oh. <laughs> well, I think the, one of the problems with Rob's uh, girlfriend was that she uh, raped him with her flip flops. Well, that's uh... okay. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> go on. <laughs> Proceed. <laughs> No, one How time. How did you get raped with a flip flop? Ah, they they exaggerate it. You know, they, Bob Levy and, and, no. and Doug. Bob Levy and <laughs> yeah, Doug get no, carried no, away. I don't and think we do. What happened is, I used to do a show <laughs> no. on. Uh, I used to do a show on WMEX at the time when I was dating this girl with uh, Bob Levy. It was the Bob Levy show. It was in Boston, and he'd always ask me to tell stories, and I was telling him. The other night, I was having sex with my girlfriend. I said, and I was still nude. And I went over and, uh, you know, bent over the bed to grab something, clean up or something. And she took her flip flop and uh, put it in my uh, my bum. It didn't penetrate the actual uh, anus, but uh, and then she sniffed it. The old Panama Jack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then she. Uh, oh, wow. How far? Did, I mean, you couldn't really go in. It right? just went in the cheeks. In the yeah, it just went in the yeah. The yeah. Cheek, okay, yeah. And so it didn't get in the if actual it went anus. In, you'd have a you'd have a real issue. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then when and she by was, a staggering by a staggering coincidence, uh, only in the cheeks is about how far Rob got when he tried to have anal with her. Oh uh, yeah, I thought oh, I thought yeah. I thought I had anal. Let, let, let me play this clip for <laughs> Dave. Hold on. Uh, no. <laughs> you know what? While you uh, are completely un, un, unable to find this, I'll go grab you in another beer because you look like you're sweating a little bit. Wow, these lights and uh, it's, it's it's hot in here. I'll be right Was back. Was he sweating like Brian Clowder? Yeah. Not nearly as much. No. Oh, uh, here it is, false <laughs> anal. And I gotta... False anal. I gotta yes, jump that's... off here in a minute, though, guys. All right, yeah. All right, let's hurry we'll, up and get we'll some let clip you go. There, right? Let play. This is this is a clip when my ex girlfriend called in because I told her. Yeah, okay. I, I said I've have never had uh, uh, anal before uh, until this girl, and uh, she she broke the news to me that uh, on air that uh, <laughs> on the air yeah that I didn't actually have anal with her that I just got uh, you know and she was your ex at the time yes. So she was just. <laughs> she was just clarifying the event. Yes. You know. Yeah. Just calling <laughs> in she's... into your show. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Calling in to. to You've to... dated some solid people. I, I have. Oh, yes. Oh, boy. 
I'm having. Are a, you currently involved? Uh, you can't get it. No, I am. I'm currently not involved. In fact, this month, Dave Landau, believe it or not, it's horrible. I'm ashamed to say it, but uh, well. two years ago she uh, moved to Atlanta when she was living with me, and uh, uh, this month marks the two-year anniversary since I've gotten laid. Really? Yes. So Are hits the drink. What's that? Are you happier? Well, not I, what's, well, not not getting laid, but I'm happier not being in a relationship and just like living by right, myself. Yeah, but, I can see that. All right. Well, here, here. Have you thought about getting a call girl, as they call them? Right, you listen, <laughs> I, I have people at work uh, offering to uh, uh, pay for it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I'm starting to get bitchy, Dave. <laughs> I think uh, I I don't think that's a bad route. I know. <laughs> There's one of them. She's 22. She's in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, she went to work at here, here, let me. What did she move to Atlanta for? For real? Music? Or yeah. Music she wanted or to be a model or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, here. Uh, well, here. Here's the clip. Uh, I'll play it real quick for for you, Dave. It's only a cool, minute, man. and then I'll let you go. One time I thought I I, I told this uh, too. I, one time I thought I had anal you know, with uh, Alicia, and then she uh, informed me a few months later that it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Only you could be naive to think that you were actually in a bubble. <laughs> well, I've never had any. You know, I thought all I know is that uh, yeah, as right, my manhood was in between you. those fat That's cheeks, and I uh, and I completed to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, listen. I was telling him. It was close. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't getting in there with He was blue, super man. excited about it, too. Like, I, I didn't want to hurt his heart yeah. right then and there. Yeah. So I waited a few weeks. <laughs> you waited a few months. A week or so. She waited until after she moved away to Georgia. That's a nice woman. She goes, <laughs> I, I, I brought it up again when we were on the phone, and she goes, uh, well, you know we never had anal sex, right? And I'm like, we didn't. She's like, no. What? Oh, no. 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 <laughs> Heck, I thought we did it all. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. And then suddenly Rob went back down to the earth and was nothing more, less than a mortal man. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That was the time I thought uh, that I had uh, <laughs> anal sex there, uh, Dave. I, you know, I've never had it, and uh, I've tried it. Yeah, and <laughs> failed. Well, you know, my my what? ex-wife, her like, well, well, let me say, my my ex-girlfriend, she had a big, giant, uh, fat cheek, nice ass, and I I've never had that. It looked like if if my ex-wife, it looked like my ex-wife she was black. Yeah. Well, my ex. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, my ex-wife, Dave, she looked like she had uh, my uh, ex-girlfriend's ass, but she like it was like deflated with a balloon. It was like you know, like a like a deflated uh-huh. balloon, like sagging Something down. Your cousin would fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Uh, oh, before I let Dave uh, Landau go, real quick, I just want to, uh, I know he's got to go, but uh, <laughs> check him out on the Artie and Anthony show uh, Monday through Thursday, 4 to 6. Congratulations, and I want to congratulate Thank our, you. Uh, our winners real quick. Melissa Adamson, uh, at Missy underscore Adamson, gets a free month of uh, Compound Media. So, uh, you get a free month of Compound yeah, you Media. You get a free month. You get a free month. Yay. Hey. Uh, Steve Roberts at Steve Roberts, he gets an, a month free, and at John May, and his uh, Twitter name is at Brett J K M A I, and it says he's a former ex cheerleader. So I don't know if yes. he enjoy compound that he's much. He's a former <laughs> ex cheerleader. So, um, so he's either wow, very Dave, gay or a, a cheerleader. Genius. <laughs> I know, right? It's my first one. <laughs> <laughs> but they're winners. Uh, of course, we love. I'm com- gonna bend him over my Thunderbird. <laughs> 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 so uh i'm gonna send out uh from the rob soul show account some uh, dms and emails uh, and give you the code to uh to get your free month and uh please enjoy it and and continue and anybody that's not a subscriber i would recommend to uh subscribe to compound oh, yeah, well worth media it. compound media excuse me and uh they're they're uh not only is it great content, and we support all the uh, almost all the shows over there, uh, <laughs> but it's uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, they've been very supportive of us. I love Allie. She always makes sure that, uh, you know, we get Anthony on the show and, and Bill. They, they let, let me on over there. It's such a, a great place, and I love being over there. And I think uh, bringing Dave on to the Artie and Anthony show has been one of the uh, – Kind of like the uh, the cherry on the uh, on the frosting, as they say. Yeah, the, cherry. the cherry on the frosting. Yeah, or the cherry on the cake, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. I'm not a baker, <laughs> god damn it. But uh, all I'm going to say is that it's great, and the show's been uh, the shows have been uh, fantastic, especially this uh, this last uh, couple weeks since you've joined, Dave. And I thank I, you, man. And I want to thank you for coming on, and, and we love having you on. And I'll see you in New York soon. We'll have dinner. Yes. Don't let me drink. I uh, <laughs> that's like a plan on both. You might, <laughs> you might, you might have we'll to actually the knock the him out. Cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get some uh, chloroform ready in case he's really insistent on drinking. Yeah, yeah. You know. I'll already have chloroform ready. Yeah. All right, well, he on. already planned on having that whether I drank Good. or not. But uh, you yeah, know, you don't need it to get it. You don't <laughs> need to get it into your bedroom. <laughs> He's getting Cosby one way or another. Oh, <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dave, thank you. Uh, thank go, you guys. Go to DaveLandow.com. Dave. Find out where he's performing. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to having you back on soon. And I'll see you in New yes. York City. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, man. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. All right. Dave Landau, ladies and gentlemen. Great guy. Yes. I always love having Dave on. But we're going to take a look. Fantastic character. We're going to take a little break. We'll be back with more show. Oh, excuse me. Don't go anywhere. Oh, boy. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. It's so good. It's so good when you're gone. I'm so happy you left. It's like heaven without you. I hope you never forget. Forget. This is a Nelson News Bulletin. A woman tells police she raped her friend's 12-year-old son by accident. Hello, I'm Mr. Nelson. A woman who was arrested for raping a child told police that it was an accident. 21-year-old Arnisha Tierra John Luis of Opelousas, Louisiana, was visiting a friend when she began horse-playing with her friend's 12-year-old son. According to the St. Landry Parish Sheriff's Office, while playing with the boy, Luis pulled down her pants, climbed on top of him, and sexually assaulted the child. The boy reported the incident to an adult, and police were called. During the interrogation, Luis admitted to engaging in sex acts with the boy, but she told investigators that it was just an accident. Luis was arrested and charged with one count of second-degree rape. Her bail was set at $10,000. St. Landry Parish Sheriff Bobby J. Gidros is urging parents to always have a watchful eye on anyone who is around their children, especially people who accidentally pull their pants down. This has been a Nelson News Bulletin. Experience the soundtrack of a sad, lonely man and chronic masturbator. Yes, you guessed it. I'm talking about the music of Rob Saul. Late at night, I can't sleep. I can't poop and I can't pee. On Pornhub all day, can't concentrate. Maybe I'm God's big mistake. What possesses a man to abuse himself with his ex-girlfriend's t-shirt months after she's gone? Mess me up like a splattery shard. It's like pouring her running right through my heart. Jacking off all damn day. Feel like I'm nothing but a big disgrace. My girlfriend's shirt in my hand. 
Masturbation. Rob Saul's Masturbation. From the album, A Two Month Affair, and all I've got to show for it is this lousy t-shirt. Available everywhere, unless some woman offers Rob some sex, and in return he'll agree to destroy all copies of this musical atrocity. Say, friends, don't you want some Rob Saul merchandise? Well, of course you do. So, head over to robsaul.com, check it out, but also hit that store button. It's your doorway to the magical world of the Mr. Nelson store. Yes, and there you can find Rob Saul t-shirts, hats, mugs, stuff like that, along with some other Nelson paraphernalia. Yes, so head over there and order your goodies today. It's so good when you're gone. It's so good when you're gone. I'm so happy you left. It's like heaven without you. I hope you never forget. Forget. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Rob I Saul really show. hope you just turned our mics on, because I just realized that they uh, were never off. No, I just did it just now. All right. Yeah. Because we were talking yeah. about piss and sweat and all that shit uh, during the yeah. break. Oh, Rob, we don't need to hear about your sex life all the time. <laughs> yeah. Apparently we didn't. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, uh, Oh, and just for full clarity, you have to understand that when Dave Landau said he was impressed with Atlantic City... He comes from Detroit. So. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, we learned that the uh, reasons for Rob being an asshole is completely the fault of booze and drugs. <laughs> uh, it's not Rob at all. No. Uh, well, well, speaking of. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's uh, all the bocane. Yeah, bocane. Do you, re- <laughs> do you remember? Uh, well, I'm sure, uh, Doug, you do. You remember the guy, Woody, that used to work for the show? Yes, I do. Well, uh, he started texting me and, and coming around again. Oh, starting Not, to get lonely. Yeah, and uh, pitching me ideas for shows and whatnot. But you got to remember something about Woody. He was such an insecure, crazy fucking person that he always mm-hmm. tried to kind of like a, I felt like, a, you know, like the, a guy that like beats down a, a woman uh subtly to make her feel bad about herself you know to make it to make him think that they need the guy that's that's how woody was with me with the show like my dad yeah <laughs> oh so you were his emotionally battered wife yeah so anyway and and it became more clear so a guy that i work with he, he bartended another job all of a sudden i you know woody starts hitting me up through facebook messenger he doesn't have my my number uh, and starts asking me for my number, but I don't give it to him. So I'm just interacting with him, and he's telling me ideas. He wants to come down for the show, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, I'm just kind of like, eh, I'm kind of iffy because Woody was just so fucking crazy. So uh, <laughs> anyway, I see the guy that I work with, and he says, oh, yeah, he came into the bar, and he, uh, he starts, you know, making conversation with me, and he says that... Uh, uh, he says that I really want to get into comedy and like podcasting and radio. That's my real passion. Uh, that's what Woody told him. He goes, oh, you know, a good friend of mine that I work with, um, he does that. Uh, and he goes, oh, yeah, really? Who is it? He goes, it's, uh, it's called the Rob Saul Show. And he said Woody pretended, at, uh, you know, at first like he didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> so then Neil pu- pulls up a picture of the show or something Neil is the guy that I work with, and uh, he said that Woody's like, oh, yeah, I, I know this guy. He's like, yeah, yeah, he, he goes, I, I, I did radio with him, and uh, Neil says that, uh, he goes, yeah, he's got a, a beautiful studio over there, like a soundboard, mics, green screen, and all that, and he goes, yeah, I know, it's all mine. <laughs> I paid for it and put it on there, and I'm thinking, what? Which, by the way, Coincidentally, that mi- microphone that Mike's talking into, that's the only thing Woody left behind. That's oh, the whoops. Only, yeah, uh, uh, that's the only thing. There. So, so Mike, how does it smell? T- I love my mouth this close to Woody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, Woody arranged a, a live show one time um, 
at the uh, Brick House Pub and Grill where we hang out. And we did a live broadcast there. And uh, Bob Levy came down and did it with us. And I got something called uh, Molly to keep me entered because I don't like working in front of a, a live audience. I'm used to being in the studio. And this uh, drug, I guess, it, it gets you chatty and talking and all that. So I did it, and he knew that I did it. So now he's going. Not only does he show up at this bar that uh, uh, my coworker works at, but then he starts showing up at my job. Not actually my job, but a place that all the employees hang out there and still asking about me. And then he says to people I work with, how's Rob? Is he still... All is he all right? Is he still all strung out on Molly and, and a drug addict and, and this and that? And I, you know, I said, <laughs> well, this you're still a drug addict, yeah. but only on Bocaine. Yeah, I know Bocaine <laughs> from me. So then, uh, so then I'm like, well, why would he? So then he hits me up and I, I block him. Well, first I send him a message and I block him. I said, listen, I heard what you were saying that everything in my studio belongs to you and, and then I'm strung out on Molly. You're going around to people I work with and, and saying stuff. I said, don't, don't fucking hit me up ever again. And I blocked him. He's a fucking maniac. I mean, you used to have things that belonged to him, but then you spilled wine all over it and you had to get new ones. No, actually, that's, that's the only thing he brought and that's the only thing he left, to be honest. Oh, yeah, well. the whole green screen stuff happened long after he was gone. Yeah, the soundboards <laughs> new. Yeah, so, yeah, and, yeah. And the soundboard before this, was this uh, narrative doesn't quite work. Yeah. Well, I, if uh, that's the kind of people vying to take my spot on this show, I feel pretty uh, secure. You're pretty job. secure. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're. Well, you actually people thought you were Woody when you first uh, came on screen because there's kind they of. Did? <laughs> yeah. Well, they thought it was like a, when they saw pictures. I guess like a. There's kind of a similarity. They just saw my giant dick and thought, oh, he must be Woody. Oh, yeah. I was going to say the giant nose, but uh, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever. Potato, potato. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> potato, potato. <laughs> it's all good. Um, but, but, yeah, it, but Mike actually has talent. Woody would come on. Do you remember, like, how awkward he, like, he would just yell and scream yeah. and be drunk on air and uh, him and Brian going at it was like. Uh, I don't know if you remember that, uh, Doug, because a lot of it was off. The I do remember some of that, that, you know, it was a bit of a soap opera there of so, the way they were fighting so, over you. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So Woody, Woody would tell Brian that he wasn't allowed to have contact with me, that there's a pecking order here. Uh, oh. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. And he, and he Woody was, in the pecking order. Woody. And, and I was the <laughs> top. Woody was next. And then uh, this is, and, and I, I, you know. And then anybody that would make a joke about him on there, he would call them on the phone, like during a break. He's like, don't you ever fucking disrespect me like that. He'd be spit. Do you understand? He sounds like that dude from the Eagles when someone will make eye contact. <laughs> yes. Don't look at what his eyes. No, nah, it was just, he couldn't make fun. Of, he was just, he was just wasn't talented at all. I mean, he was the reason I, uh, I, he was very good behind the scenes. He got sponsors. He would arrange events with sponsors. And he was very good, like, but then he'd always want to be on air. And he was just horrible on the air. Yeah. And, uh, wow. So, so adios. So uh, Woody, if you're watching, don't yeah. fucking hit me up again. And I'm fine. <laughs> After that time I did Molly that day, I, I haven't done it again. And uh, if you want this microphone back, yeah, come and get fact, it. I'm going to fucking piss on it and throw it in your fucking don't ugly piss face. On it because I'm using it. Well, well, I mean, if he wants well, it. Let's be honest, he, Rob. You wish you could do Molly, but she said no. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Molly, true. like any other woman, he hasn't had in two years. Yes. Yes, two years clean. Can you caress my shoulder a little longer? It felt kind of good. I will. <laughs> I would love for you. Oh, boy. Oh, sorry. Oh, boy. I can play make... it. I got to go change my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I got the magic Yeah, uh, it, it may sound a little scary, but uh, Mike Gruina is the sanest uh, person that uh, is in uh, Rob's life. Because, uh, yeah. boy, the characters that have come and gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, I think Dave you, Landau Doug. will be a good invent. Uh, Bill Schultz is as much of a. Uh, as, uh, I mean, he's more successful, but he's like a fuck up like me. And I mean, me, me and Bill will just sit there. And <laughs> he's direct. a successful fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> That's the good kind. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, 
But I love Bill. <laughs> Bill's great. But uh, yeah, I think yeah. M- Mike Landau, Mike Landau, Mike Carina and Dave Landau would probably <laughs> be the most uh, positive uh, influences in my life. <laughs> well, Dave doesn't drink. <laughs> well, so there's right. so there's that. I well, have. look how Landau ended up, you know? So well, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, yeah you... Uh... Get married, have kids, and get the radio show that you actually want. I know. I know. Wow. Well, well, that I mean, that sounds great. Besides being the married with kids, I mean, <laughs> I know you, the people that get successful after they get married and stuff. When you know, eh, not that I, I don't think I don't know if Compound Media if they're pulling in that much pussy over there, but I mean, it's mainly dudes that listen to it. But uh, you know, I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get real successful once I get married. Uh, because, yeah, because Carly's got a great family. Yeah, so I think that'll be like make you the Opie and Anthony. I'll be the Anthony, the kind of guy that just sits behind and it's like the fuck up and <laughs> doesn't get married with kids. And uh, listen, I'm, I'd be happy with that, just banging younger chicks and uh, yeah, totally. Money. And you could be oh. the uh, you could be the married guy uh, <laughs> with the kids. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to have goals. Yeah, for sure. Oh, show. Ah. Oh, yeah. I should have made mention of it, but, you know, that is quite an achievement on Dave Landell's part to you know, sit between Artie and Anthony. Because, you know, they'll have a lot of comedians on there as guests, and boy, you yeah. know, you, you, the oxygen is out of the room and they kind of have to be quiet. <laughs> Yeah, but well, Dave I mean, Landau is able to navigate that, and he, he does it very well. Yeah, he holds his own, and he's funny. It's like yeah. he doesn't oh, come yeah. in with bullshit. It's like the shit he comes in is like funny. Yeah, and Dave's got one of those like infectious laughs that even when he laughs, it's like it makes <laughs> it makes me laugh when he's like naturally laugh. Kind of like Mike, yeah. Mike's got that too. Like some of the funniest moments we have on the. Uh, on the uh, Saul show, when we did the Saul show clips of the week, the ones that were always pulled were the ones where I made Mike laugh, and it would just make me laugh. Cause <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, uh, it's a shame that uh, only happens once a month. Uh, well, it hasn't been happening yeah. that much lately. Right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like a little visitor. <laughs> like a little visitor <laughs> once a month. The first one, what was it? Uh, uh, oh, no, the one, no, actually, the first one was Mike making me laugh so hard because he was accusing me of lying, but he was being like dead serious. No, he was not. He, <laughs> that oh, I was uncontrollably he laughing. Lying. He wasn't lying. You wiped that chick's ass. Uh, yes. You did. Yeah. And then the uh, the second one was the one where Brian uh, Clauder kept comparing himself to Estee Lauder for, you know, <laughs> the thing. And I said, you know, oh, Brian, do you, uh, what did I say? Brian, do you, f- would yeah, you no, fuck like, a tranny? Maybe, as in Maybelline, I said. And <laughs> Mike starts laughing at me. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe she's a tranny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But, you know, that's tough for Brian. That must have broken his heart, that uh, Kumia tweet. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, he just... That's tough. Yeah, but the funny thing it, it, it annoyed me is that he, he retweets himself from the Rob Soul Show account asking yeah. him about it. And then I, and the, the, it comes to my mind, I'm, why, would he ret- why would he retweet? That's so fucking dumb. And I'm like, I guess Anthony didn't even respond because I thought, like, obviously he would retweet it. But then I go and take a gander and I see the responses and I start fucking cracking up laughing. And I'm like, you can't retweet. Like, you think it's like... Uh, for our timeline for the Rob Saul show, that it's interesting for for guest uh, for you asking Fortnite. Yeah, to Get you asking Anthony Kumi if he plays Fortnite, but it's not interesting enough to retweet him fucking dogging you for it and making funny comments. Like, what, yeah. what, what the fuck is going through your brain? You know, I do well, want to. I do want to touch on Doug's latest comment. Um, being a stand-up comedian, um, we reach phases in our particular careers, I guess, if you can call it that, um, where uh, when you totally bomb like a set or a joke or anything on stage, and you'll get off the stage and be like, you know what? It was the audience. It wasn't me. And it, it takes a certain maturity level. To actually realize, like, nope, it was totally me. Um, yeah. And I feel like Brian's not at that point where he can admit his own fault. He'll be like, oh, well, Anthony Cumia just doesn't like games as much as he said. He's a little fucking chump. Yeah. yeah. And then he, he told me, I didn't see it, but then he's, you know, he, then he made, like, a crude remark about him dating younger women to, like, get back. 
<laughs> oh how god! Is, how is that an insult? I know exactly. <laughs> you're you are licking the freshest pussy, yeah. and 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 you're you're trying to make fun of it after he dogged you for playing a free video game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> play play Fortnite. Oh fruit. man! Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I play Battlefront. You fruit. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> That's so good. Uh, I thought you were a gamer. Yeah, I'm just not a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. I, I, I've never downloaded Fortnite because I don't want to group myself in with the poor people just yet. I'm trying. I'm trying to maintain <laughs> the uh, the uh, false narrative that I have a little bit of money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, he's uh. He uh, couldn't quite, uh, uh, you know, uh, that's what I said. I, uh, and you know, by the way, not only the phone call I uh, I demonstrated that I would have got if Anthony Cumia said he liked Fortnite, but <laughs> that would have been retweeted all over the Soul oh Show. Oh, my God. And, uh, uh. That would have been. Uh... Brian, I mean, even if he doesn't, on no substances, no alcohol, he doesn't shut the fuck up. Even oh. even when he's not talking to anyone, he doesn't shut the fuck up. Yeah, oh. <laughs> he just he's like talk talk to. He was up. he was in here wiring the studio, and, and me and Rob were out of the room, like not like he couldn't even see us, and he was still just talking, narrating everything he was doing, just nonstop. Yeah, he just he's one of those people. When that, there's no one to talk to, like he's probably talking someone's ear off right now, even yeah. if no one's listening. Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah. Uh, Fortnite? You, you play Fortnite? You're my gamer tag, I guess. If you really, yeah, that's what I say. Hey, did you watch this YouTube video? I want to, you know, I'm serious. It could be. Uh, you know, it's like, well, I gotta go. And I got this. Uh, and I got this uh, new do this uh, new job. It's it's uh, gonna be really good for me. And uh, Ripped Radio is gonna be on uh, Netflix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Gonzo yeah. Podcast pulled their Twitter, by the yeah. way, too. I noticed. Yeah, what's the, what's the update on Gonzo? R.I.P. Gonzo Podcast Network. Oh. I don't know. Okay. I guess they were being oh. sued for something, and they just it was costing them too much money. Jeez. Just when Brian got a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got to be okay, Brian. Well... Gotcha. He's got to be. I don't know that for sure, so don't hold me to it. He's got to be I passed out drunk by now. I hope he is. As much <laughs> as much shit as we've been talking now, nah, I'll, he's, be, uh, I'll probably be getting playing a phone Fortnite, call. Fortnite, man. Yeah. I'm playing yeah. Fortnite. Yeah. Tilted Towers. Yeah. Uh, Strangely enough, tonight's broadcast was brought to you by Fortnite. <laughs> it's free. Download now. Oh man! If if Anthony Cumia would have said he liked Fortnite, I would have had to oh, listen to a three-hour conversation about how it has to be incorporated and how he has to be on the show. Or you know, we should get then, we should get Cumia on and for our Fortnite exactly, segment, so and we I'll can talk do the to whole him. show yeah. talking about Fortnite. Ah, oh, he gets an obsession in his little uh, his little pea brain, and he really? just, uh, he, he can't uh, he can't stop. He he runs with it. Yeah. I well, mean, I can understand well. his uh, flawed, broken thought process where if there's something that's really big going on, you know, it might be beneficial to talk uh, uh, about it. But there's a way to go about it, and um, blatant obsession isn't, isn't, isn't it. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, well. Fortnite's huge. I go into work, and just about every day, someone's talking about Fortnite. But they don't talk to me about that because they know that I'm going to, you know. Well, that's because no one talks to you because you don't them have down. any friends. But... <laughs> <Nobody talks to. laughs> yeah. Everybody talks to me at work. Uh, it's mainly like, where the fuck's my drink, Rob? But, uh, yeah, that's pretty uh, much it. But uh, no, they, be, but they, they know that I'm going to shut them. I don't, I don't, I don't entertain people. Uh, if, if it's something I'm not interested in, I don't, you know, I don't entertain it. You know how some people just entertain ideas just to make. So people don't yeah, feel bad. Yeah, I am very yeah. guilty of that. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I'm just incapable. Well, you know, Brian just has a new hobby. And uh, you know, that's important. It's like uh, like playing golf, uh, even when it's only good when you have a three-holder. <laughs> three-holder. 
What does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't know. That's What's a three holer besides your average prostitute? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I he said he could only make three holes. <laughs> conversation. <laughs> oh well. Oh boy, it's all right, Doug. Nice. <laughs> Nice try. You're the backbone of, of, of this show, Doug. You're allowed to strike <laughs> yeah. out every once in yeah. a while. <laughs> You're allowed. Yeah. <laughs> if all else fails, you can switch to one of your other personalities, and then yeah. they'll yeah. carry the show the rest I of the way. I'm very offended by that. You know how many women have, have now dropped off the show? Well, zero, but negative zero at this point. And it's because of a harmful, uh, derogatory terms like that. Referring to her as nothing but having three holes. Now, come on. Come on, guys. You could do better. Lefty, thank you for bailing out Doug. He was having a rough comedic moment. Well, good Lord. You know, how many times is this big? I mean, there's not enough numbers in the universe to count. Uh, uh, you know, you know what would redeem Doug more is if uh, we got a call or uh, we got a little tidbit from um, uh, what's his name? Red Neckerton. Red Neckerton. Yeah. Let's see what he has well, to say about uh, yeah, it. Yeah, but I got more than just a tidbit. I mean, just ask Betty June about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Does uh, she have any uh, any uh, face tattoos of your old bowling rings? <laughs> oh, Not on her face, no. <laughs> oh no! She's got that three knuckle hey, punch stupid. down below. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, we're gonna take a break. We'll be back. Uh, oh boy! Yeah, it's, uh, don't go anywhere. You'll miss some great programs. <laughs> yeah, coming don't. right up. We'll be right back with more of the Rob Saul Show here on RobSaul.com. This is a Nelson News Bulletin. Georgia man breaks into GameStop with clear plastic over his face as disguise. Hello, I'm Mr. Nelson. Police in Georgia have released a video of a burglar who used a plastic water bottle wrapping as a disguise on his head. Detective asked the public for help in identifying the suspect. Police wrote on Twitter, did you ever give any thought to what your disguise was going to be when you decided the life of crime was your bag of water? Well, this guy did, and yes, he used a plastic bag from a package of bottled water. This puts new meaning to the term waterhead. In all seriousness, this craftily disguised gent decided to burglarize GameStop here in St. Mary's last night. Do you know who he is? You can help us catch him. Once you stop laughing, please give our detectives a call at our office. We'll be sipping water while we wait. It did not take long for them to receive tips from people who recognized the suspect. He was identified as 22-year-old Kerry Hammond Jr., who is 6 feet 1 inch tall and weighs 275 pounds. Police said that he was last seen driving a white Ford Taurus. Officers tracked down and arrested Hammond, who was wanted in connection with a burglary of the St. Mary's GameStop. Hammond was charged with burglary and criminal damage to property in the second degree. Huh. He must have been really thirsty for video games. This has been a Nelson News Bulletin. Say, friends, don't you want some Rob Saul merchandise? Well, of course you do. So, head over to robsaul.com, check it out, but also hit that store button. 
It's their doorway to the magical world of the Mr. Nelson store. Yes, and there you can find Rob's all t-shirts, hats, mugs, stuff like that, along with some other Nelson paraphernalia. Mm, yes, so head over there and order your goodies today. Coming this summer, see an old classic transformed. I did not make you to be transgendered. I'm a transitioning woman, Geppetto! No, you're a faggot! Wow, Transnokio, you dance like a real woman. I am a real woman. <laughs> oh, holy shit! I got fake tits and wear a wig. I like short skirts, but my cock's too big. Say, friends, check out Nelson Theater at selfie.com slash Nelson. Yes, there you'll find my poor man mystery science theater treatment of public domain movies that really deserve the treatment. Yes, you can head over there and check out the links to my trailers to such films on my YouTube channel. Yeah, you can preview them and then head over back to selfie.com slash Nelson and purchase yourself some Mr. Nelson treatments of movies. I'll be right there to guide you through it. All right, hello. Welcome back to the program. Welcome back. Uh, what a uh, what a night! Oh, what a night! Late <laughs> December, back in '63. Something, 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 something. Me. I remember <laughs> what a night. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, let me just say before we go into any other material, um, I just learned that anytime Mr. Rob Saul goes to a liquor store, he has to get some, what the fuck is that, pickled sausage? Some sort of pickled sausage, yes. It oh. smells like fucking college fraternity puke. Jeez Louise. It's rough in here right, right now. That one was a little spicier than uh, the ones I normally get. Oh. Rob, is that a ratchet uh, delicacy? Uh, <laughs> it might be. A ratchet <laughs> delicacy. Yes, it could be. Just uh, <laughs> just uh, throw the wrapper out, out outside and see how many of them flock to it. Yeah. <laughs> I, there used to be a, a meme on Facebook that I loved because... Uh, uh, you know, I worked at Red Lobster, but it was like, a, it said how to catch a hood rat, and it had a bag of those cheesy bread biscuits uh, outside. Oh, <laughs> yeah, cheesy bread. Cheesy bread. Cheesy bread. I regret to inform you that, that there was a point in my life where I would have been caught with that with, with that kind of bait. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's okay. I think uh, uh, Doug, uh, let, me, let me see if I can uh, find it here. Doug did some sort of bit when I worked at Red Lobster <laughs> about uh <laughs> oh yeah about cheesy bread <laughs> about cheesy bread <laughs> yeah. that's what we call the ratchet laugh <laughs> oh I hate it Mike, <laughs> Mike hates when I do I hate it I was waiting on a table where you could see me through a window at from the bar to the table and you were doing that laugh and I was laughing <laughs> at the table I'm like oh this is embarrassing I'm just laughing because they're black <laughs> <laughs> here you go this is uh, our uh, cheesy bread cheesy bread yeah I want some of that cheesy bread yes cheesy bread Yes, you can get some cheesy bread at Red Lobster. No, 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 no. Not cheesy in the sense that it's cheap and tawdry. <laughs> oh, heavens no. It's bread infused with the lovely tastiness of cheese. Yes, that cheesy taste that Beyonce fans have come to know and love. Yeah, it was cheesy bread. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not racist at all. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just an acknowledgement of the enjoyment of a, of a particular dish. Well, I was working when he did that, but I was yes, working right. at uh, Red Lobster at the time, and a lot of uh, we started getting a lot of people coming in because Beyonce mentioned 
Red Lobster and the cheesy bread in her uh, one of her songs on the album, <laughs> which was bringing us in a lot of a lot of more extra unwanted clientele at the. Oh, uh, Rob, unwanted now, Rob. Well, for me, I don't know if the the business oddly went. <laughs> Red Lobster. I mean, it's like I, sometimes I I like read drinks. I, like I I go to Chili's and it's like I know what type of clientele you're looking for. Like it's like uh, watermelon sweet honey uh, sangria. Uh, okay, yeah. well, <laughs> why it's got to be watermelon? Uh, even yeah. it yeah. could have been white peach. Yeah, white peach. What else? <laughs> Raspberry. I, oh man. The, Last week at, at work, <laughs> I was getting a, a raspberry uh, syrup margaritas with sugar rims. And... Well, that sounds you delicious. <laughs> you, you pronounce it syrup. 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 <laughs> syrup. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. Uh, you're just a product of your environment, Rob. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. I think y'all forgot to put the liquor in here. <laughs> that happens. Yeah. Yeah, you know. And it's always the people that uh order the sweetest, most syrupy drinks. And that's the point of those drinks that you yeah. don't taste it. The, exactly. The syrup mm. and all the sweeteners overpower the liquor. But that's what they huh. want. And then they go, I'll taste the liquor in here. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Well, understand. Well, is that the Where point? Are these that, people why not? Grew up to complain about. Everything? I mean, they. I mean, they always think they're being cheated. Like, oh, I'm being cheated. Like, well, if you're that concerned about it, why don't you just order a sugary drink and then order a shot, and you can dump it in and make it yourself. <laughs> but that would make too much sense. Nah, yeah, it's always about you know. It's always a victimization, uh, being victimized all the time. Yeah. Oh, I'm being cheated. I'm being. Well, cheated. tell me this. Well, tell me this, Rob. Do they blame the establishment for their diabetes? Uh, <laughs> uh, probably. I, <laughs> I believe it is pronounced diabetes. Diabetes. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> diabetes. Diabetes. It takes me uh, at the job. It takes me uh, at least an hour or two to uh, to close the bar after we're closed. To get drunk enough to, to do your job? Yeah. Fucking... No. Pleasantly, <laughs> to you know. But what happens is when people leave, the doors don't shut, so they're cracked a little. So like the other day, like you know, not even the other day. It happens all the time. I'll be sitting there, and it's like almost two in the morning, and somebody will just walk in and sit at the bar and just look at me and go, "Can I help you?" <laughs> yeah, can I see a menu? I'm like, no, we're we're closed. Yeah, yeah like, no, we closed three hours ago. Yeah, we closed three hours ago. <laughs> ah, well, I saw that the door was cracked a little bit. That's what we did. <laughs> that, that's a good way to bring in business. We cracked the door a little bit. To uh... <laughs> yeah, the door was ninety five percent closed. <laughs> so that must mean come on in. Come on in. But I mean, what? I, a lot of times I go behind people and I shut it tight behind them and I still people see people banging on the windows and tugging at the door uh, handles. Like, oh, I mean, people are fucking nuts. <laughs> it's it's like The Walking Dead. Yeah. Kind of, uh, yeah. That. Oh my God. That's such a great analogy. <laughs> Cheesy like, bread. Like Cheesy <laughs> bread. Hand, like handprints on the fucking glass doors. Like. Oh. Fucking fingers through the tiny ass crack. <laughs> tiny ass crack. Hey. Hey, hey now. <laughs> well, there's no tiny ass crack at all. <laughs> there's nothing tiny about it. All right. Well, I'm going to put um, uh, Mike uh, Carwina. I have a mission for you, sir. Now that it's been two years, uh, I, I'm going to need you to go around. Hey, you got a girlfriend. You don't need to be flirting with these girls. So, Well, he is actively looking for a tranny. No, no not that. No, I'm, I'm being serious here. Uh, I need you to go around. Yeah. Any of the cute girls working there, see if they're willing to uh, take a little three seconds of pleasure. <laughs> I, you know what? I will uh, try. There you go. I'll try. Even if it's a pity fuck, I'll take it at this point. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, you know. Not from you, Mike. I mean, one of the cute girls. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> You know, I will say there are two new casinos opening up in in the next month. 
yeah. less than a half, two months in Atlantic City. There's going to be a lot of restaurant workers that don't know who they're who they're going to fuck next. And you should show up into that bar dressed that dapperly and say, hey, yeah, why don't you come back to my house that I have in, a, yeah. in this nice development. Development, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just Look leave. Just leave that word out. Golden room. You there in. will wow. be at least one woman in both of those casinos. I hope that would be charmed by yeah. your sunglasses in a dark room at nine at fucking 10 o'clock at night oh wow, look at i mean look at these bright lights from the golden like flashing lights i need to yeah from our the, tomb um, in the uh, fucking yeah. sphinx <laughs> it's the tomb the tomb <laughs> what i mean what, Live from the great pyramid yeah. what i mean what background do you guys uh think works best for this show Oh, this one's good. Like I said, this one it looks okay. It's the other one where it's like I said could uh, cause epileptic seizures. Yeah, I only uh, use uh, what uh, what the uh, the uh, fucking giant X Men fucking yeah, light yeah. up. Yeah, I mean I, that one I I only use for, like we're in we're in a small corner. I try to only use that one. Yeah, it's not as uh you know uh, distracting as, yeah. as you can tell. We're hashing out our behind the scenes yeah. dilemmas yes. live yes. on air, yeah. and yeah. as well, only that's, right. that's, that's, that's how a former do. producer used to teach us. Yeah. So you got it. Hey. Hey. The X Men. You got it. Do it on air, Rob. That's the best way to do it. You know what? You know what? I'm trying to do a show on. I'm trying to do the show. Yeah, but Rob, you you got to do it. Sometimes you just got to hash it out on air. That's what works the best. I don't think the audience wants to see all that. (laughs) Well, you know, uh, Rob, uh, listen, I know what I'm doing. You're the reason I can't get laid anymore, Rob. You're right at the house. I get get laid. Hillary Rodham Clinton would be more oh, than happy no, no. to get some dick. But uh, you know what, what was fun? The fuck just happened? Yeah. Uh, that was a well, old, you're old, lucky old, you missed out on old all producer. Those days. Yeah. Which, by the way, you know what used to crack me up to his arm. He was so dumb. Uh, he was our old producer before Brian. He, when I used to do that, get on the uh, megaphone like that and do an impression of him. He would get blown away. He thought that I had a recording of him. I would make up, <laughs> I would, I would make up crazy shit that he never even said. And he was like, "Is that was Rob played a clip for me?" Because he he, he swore he was like that, you know, that it was dead yeah. on. Was yeah, hold on, let me load up your sex tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know it was what? with a woman, it would, <laughs> wouldn't fool him at all. You know what? This background would fit so great if we had like a New Year's Eve ed- edition of, of the Rob Saul show. Yeah. All right. Well, I keep feel like that we're in mind because New Year's down. Eve will get here eventually. Mm. Yep. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I don't know. We, uh, Back I'm, to I'm, King I'm, Tut's I'm tomb. I, I told, uh, I told Mike that, uh, we, uh, we were just going to keep going, and we're going to broadcast here from our own uh, social media platforms, and uh, we're going to just keep getting great guests and keep doing the things that we do. And uh, exact, I mean, uh, I, by the way, if you're a podcast network and you want us, <laughs> we're available. Yeah, I've said it a million <laughs> times, and I'll say it again. I feel like we have the uh, uh, the best team the Rob Saul Show has ever had between me, Mike Carwina, and Doug. I mean, the, just the. Uh, uh, it's, uh, yeah. it's, 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 oh, now it's time for me to mention, this will be my last appearance on the Ross. Oh, jeez. <laughs> don't, don't stop it. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Because my, like, like my heart my like, stopped for a second. I'm uh, like, no, don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> well, Doug, uh, now no, that don't I'll worry, s- I don't have a life. I've got I'll, nowhere to go. I'll send you a new calf. All right. Doug, by the way, uh, maybe we'll put up a vote thing, or uh, if Doug wants to do it or if he doesn't, but uh, now that we got the new video card and extra monitor, we could actually put Doug on video and still oh, function okay. the show oh, if, uh, if we want to have uh, All right. the old... So the, for next week, I'll hook up my camera and I'll I'll be on the show. I would love to see just a hairy-shouldered Doug Nelson <laughs> just staring back at me through the camera. Doug, will you do the show topless? Uh, well... Uh, <laughs> I suppose I could, but I have to uh, uh, let Mike down. Is uh, I'm a shaver, so because oh. he does have hairy shoulders. How about 
Can no. you do? Can, can you do a show next week? Can you do the show with one of the cows in your lap? Um, how, <laughs> what? Well, yeah. If I'm going to spend the rest of my life in a wheelchair, <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, put this twelve hundred pound. You don't have any right baby. You don't have any baby calves. You can. Uh, you can uh, yeah, bundle up in a baby is, blanket. Yeah. Uh, boy, that you know, would be kind of hard to do. You know, I say, you say, I got Stevie. You, you, you can have your little uh, little calf there. Well, I mean, you're, you, if I do that, Rob, you you will agree to pay for all the cleanup in the house, right? Ah, wow. Because that's that's going to be a lot of. It depends on how. Ex- oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> that would be a lot of bullshit. Yeah, a lot of yeah, bull- literally, a lot of bullshit. Not to mention all the uh, the cost of the jars of peanut butter uh, that uh, Doug will use for the. Uh... God damn it! <laughs> once once the calves are in the house, you know. <laughs> I don't want to know yeah, what yeah. that means. No, no. <laughs> I don't. Uh, as a result of that, Mike, you have my full uh, support in finding Rob that train. Oh, group. stop it! <laughs> yeah. So it's wait, it's gonna be fun. So, <laughs> well, right. I'm in this far. I I might as well go all the way. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Doug, a hole's a hole. Doug, hey, <laughs> you can three hole it like golf. <laughs> uh, boy, how are you gonna do that? Oh, we mean post op. <laughs> uh, Doug, if there is any way that you can help my escapade with uh, a jar of peanut butter. Uh, a jar of peanut Just butter. let me know. Uh. <laughs> All right, we're going to take one last break. We'll come back and uh, we'll wrap things up for tonight. Uh, don't go anywhere because we still got some funny stuff to discuss and I got some uh, big news for you. Oh, oh do you? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Don't worry, I got the cigars. <laughs> I don't even know if I know what this news is. Uh, well. <laughs> We'll be back with that. Don't go anywhere. Rob Saul Show here on SaulShow.com and RobSaul.com. We'll be back. It's so good going. It's so good when you go. I'm so happy you left. How, how? It's like heaven without you. I hope you never forget. Forget. This is a Nelson News Bulletin. Naked man tries to have sex with a car's tailpipe. Hello, I'm Mr. Nelson. People were shocked to see a naked man trying to have sex with a car's tailpipe, according to police in Kansas. Newton police said that they have arrested the 24-year-old man after being seen on the ground with his genitals inside the car's tailpipe. The man, who was not identified, is facing a charge of lewd and lascivious behavior. According to the police investigation, the incident unfolded on Tuesday at around 12 p.m. in the 1200 block of East Broadway. Witnesses at the scene called the police to say that the man was lying naked on the ground under a car. He was then seen attempting to have sacks with the tailpipe of the car. Police officers who arrived at the scene ordered the man to stand up and get dressed. Officers then tasered the man as he failed to listen to their commands. He appeared to be under the influence of alcohol and drugs. The man was taken to a nearby hospital for treatment as his blood alcohol content level was at .34 or more than four times the legal driving limit. Hmm. Well, he wasn't exactly driving, was he? He was... Well, yeah. This has been a Nelson News Bulletin. In space, no one can hear... I stand corrected. (laughs) Oh, don't go in there.
Well, hello there. I see you like shower caps. Me too. Not bad, not bad. Good selection of ass around here. Oh, oh, no! <laughs> Reminds me of home, back at the old trailer park. Don't forget to bring the beer. My compliments, Captain. You're the first man to set foot on this planet. Well, I haven't yet. Now I did. I think we've got to do something. We will. We're gonna sit here and watch TV. And now it's time for a sneak peek behind the scenes at the Rob Saul Show. Uh, uh, people at work are convinced we don't even like each other because they say at work we don't talk. It's like we keep a safe distance to, uh, you know, where we don't uh, blow uh, too many. Uh, yeah, we we'll try not to do that. Yeah, I know that. I mean, you you uh, do me while we're both at at work, and you even me twice one night. That was one night. For some reason, I was having a pop. You even killed me that yeah, one time. Yeah, I don't know. You know some... We were both at work, and you. Me. But that was only that one day. I don't know what happened. I must have had your up and my open. It was like it's hitting every I didn't contact. Call you back, so you got concerned that your penis was too small. I did. So you stopped. I <laughs> me Do work. you know my brother? <laughs> and that was a disturbing sneak peek behind the scenes at the Rob Saul Show. It's so good when you're gone. It's so good when you're gone. I'm so happy you left. It's like heaven without you. I hope you never forget. Forget. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Rob Saul Show. We are live. To right. our uh, farewell segment here tonight. Yeah. Yeah. A it's that bit. time again where we all have to say goodnight. Yeah. Well, not quite yet, okay? Oh. We're not... Uh, we're... One last little bedtime story. Yes, one last little bedtime yeah. story. Uh, first of all, my big news that I have is that uh, Mr. Nelson has an extremely uh, funny podcast that you can check out on RadioMisfits.com. <laughs> And it uh, it's uh, it's available. When when do you upload the new ones, Dougie? Every Wednesday and Saturday, new episodes will be posted. Okay, every Wednesday. Yeah. Every Wednesday and Saturday, twice a week, you get to listen to yeah. Doug Nelson and all the voices in his head. Yes, that's right. Yes, and we have to have a fresh talk coming up soon. We. Can't oh. forget about our fresh talk segments where we do a. Uh, uh, we did one, and I think that it was uh, very uh, good. So I think we should yeah, continue. Yeah, I mean, after We're, that, I stopped talking about uh, jokes that made Rob uncomfortable. So, <laughs> so, uh, so I feel like it's good for us. Yeah, fresh yeah. talk is where uh, we do a behind the scenes uh, where we talk off air of the Rob Saul show, and we talk to Doug and all the voices in his head. Yeah. Because, you know, it's nice to have someone else talk to those voices yes. instead of just me. Just you. <laughs> um, that's so impressive. I didn't open the uh, phone lines tonight. so. Uh, well, that's, uh, well, Dave Landau certainly did. But I'm going to make a quick call uh, uh, quickly for you. Of okay. Somebody that uh, wants to talk to us. Oh. Yeah. Yes. So let me uh, let me do that. Let me go ahead. It's and... Arm Dorado. I'm and, intrigued. No. Is it Woody? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no. Is it Lily? That's not gonna happen. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. But uh, yeah. where's old Lily? Let me uh, get the number here and dial. One of my favorite people on the planet. Is it Stanley? No, it's not Stanley. <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> I hear you're lonely, Rob. Oh. Well, let me take care oh, of that. Oh, it's me. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's go. Go ahead and, uh, and get this person on the line. 
only one fucking person I know in Atlantic City. Oh, this is, by the way, <laughs> former co-host of this show. Uh, can be co-host anytime she wants. One of my favorite people on the planet. The beautiful, the lovely, the talented, the funny, Miss Owen Elliott. Owen Elliott. <laughs> God, what what a what an entrance. Yeah. Jesus. Well, you know, you, you know I have nothing but love for you, uh, Owen. I know. And I so feel the same way, and especially my little Dougie, Dougie. Well, hello, Owen. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I miss you guys. How are you? We miss you too. Owen, I was you... just out looking for you, and I couldn't find you. Yeah, we, we miss you too. Yeah. Well, in case <laughs> in case anybody uh, uh, that's listening does not know, Owen Elliott was a uh, the female anchor here on the Rob Saul Show for a bit, and uh, she is uh, just a, an amazing, amazingly talented uh, uh, singer. Her her mom was Mama Cass from the Mamas and the Papas. She performs occasionally with Wilson Phillips. It's her friend. She got Corny Wilson here on the show, and she is just. Uh, uh, a, an amazing, beautiful person. We went to the Rippies together a couple years ago, and uh, just we had a, did had a blast. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, was it though? We, yeah. <laughs> well, we yeah. won. We won. Um. So, so that made it fun. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, but I guess you, I guess you guys wouldn't know what that feels like. No. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> yeah. That's true. Exactly. I wouldn't. No. Yeah. All I know well, is we won. Uh, Rob's... Oh wait. Uh, yeah. We, uh, I was gonna say we won a Rippy. Yeah. Rob's but, uh, but, drunken, but Rob really didn't. drunken, bitter I rejection did. phase. That's uh, all I was exposed to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that's the most important thing, you know. Very funny. Very <laughs> funny. What's been going on, man? What's oh. the story with you guys? Anything good? Well, we've just been uh... no, nothing good. Yeah. Uh, but that's okay because yeah, that, that is the core good. of the show. <laughs> So, well, Owen, yeah. Owen, Owen gave failure. me, uh, please, Owen, Owen, uh, Owen gave me a very supportive message when I was out there doing stuff in New York, and I was on with Robert O'Neill, saying she was proud of me, and I, I love Owen. Just, uh, just hearing from her uh, makes me well, smile. Well, it's, it's nice to see you making good. You know, yeah. you're really, you're really getting somewhere. I'm very proud. Thank you, Owen. And uh, I wish you would. I wish you would call in more and be a part of the show more. And you know, any time that you want to be on this program, even to just to do like a contribute a little bit or or just uh, be on air and, and and vent a little, you know, you're always welcome. <laughs> and, and well, we, we I it. always have plenty to vent about. <laughs> and, and we plenty to vent about. You know, no, you're it's always all welcome. It's all good. You're always welcome here to do that. Because, yeah, well, uh, rem Rob, remember, Owen, unlike us, actually has a life and something of a reputation to defend. <laughs> so uh, associating well, with that, us that, that, can that be harmful at times. Very true. Yeah. That's something that's, you know, a, a subjective, you know, point of view. I, I, yeah. I don't know if I have a good reputation or a bad reputation. But, yeah. you know, it's all good. It's all good. It's interesting. You know, that's, yeah. that's what I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, but Mike, I want to know about your trip to California. Did you drink any good wine? Did you get your I, sommelier hat on? I drank, he doesn't even know. I, I heard that he, he came to work. Somebody told me that he came to work drunk after a, a liquor convention. Oh no, this 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 happened. Yeah, <laughs> and they said that you know they gave him a, a free glass of him and his girl a free glass of wine. I was off that day, so I wasn't working the bar. So they gave him a glass oh. of uh, Mark West uh, Pinot Noir and. Yeah, yeah. And I swore it was good. He, he goes, he says, uh, <laughs> nah, what is this? He goes, and, 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 the, and the server was like, I'm not sure what they gave you. It looks like a light, like a mark. He goes, no way. This isn't. Okay, okay. I'm I not, wasn't uh, that assertive. Uh, that's not what I, I heard. I wasn't that assertive. <laughs> No this way! Is, this funny. has got to be a Cabernet, a Lisa keep, Louis Martini. I'm a sommelier. Mind. No, okay, that that didn't happen. Hold on. First oh. off, let me just say this in my own defense. I apologize if I'm cutting you off, Owen, but uh, I had spent the last six hours at a liquor and beer uh, and uh, and he wine says I'm festival. an alcoholic. Liquor, beer, and wine <laughs> festival, where I only drank wine for the first third of the time that I was there. The last. Four hours, I was drinking fucking ginger infused whiskey and lemon gin oh. and all that exotic liquor. My taste buds were fried. Shot. Shot. I, you, oh, you're defending you yourself? Could, you, I'm such a degenerate alcoholic that I couldn't even taste the wine. You could have given me great. And put on juice. my sommelier hat. And I'd have been like, this is Napa Cab from 2007. 
Yeah, but the thing is, you, the thing is, is you were being so <laughs> arrogant about no. Oh, this is not. No, a- no, no, that no, that's not how it was because they all asked me because I because I knew all the questions from the liquor up the Friday book before. So so they all wanted right, right. They all wanted to catch me in a vulnerable chance. And in, in, in that's a not what spot. I heard. I heard they just and told they you they just thought so it might be a Mark that, West, and you started no nope, no nope, talking about how smart you are. And now you're a Somalia. That's, that's, yeah. that's not at all how it happened. <laughs> I feel like it is. They said even your girl. Well, I feel like I feel like the whole Somalia thing is you never really are done learning. That is you know? very I true. Mean, there, That's it's very just true. Kind of an ongoing thing. Am I right? Absolutely. Now, I, now, now, not counting our personal life, Mike, but uh, as a Somalia, when you taste, you spit or swallow. Oh, I'm a swallower. Oh, uh, uh. wow. <laughs> guess, you know, I was I guess thinking think... about that the other day. Because I just <laughs> went, I've awesome. actually, all the wine tastings, I've never spit it out. I don't know if I'm just too enough. You'll alcoholic, see a lot of people you know, that do. Well enjoy it. That's a waste of money, I feel like. Don't like have spit you buckets. got a bunch of old rich dudes spitting out four hundred dollar bottle of wines in a fucking bucket. Like, <laughs> Let the, because they can. Say, yeah. I went to Paso Robles and um I I got a lot of wine. I I came home with fifteen bottles of wine. I how, spent how many <laughs> wineries did you hit? Just one? Uh no. I hit uh oh goodness. Um three, seven, like eight or nine. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like By the way, Mike wineries. Mike Mike says he brought home fifteen bottles of wine and then he comes here, doesn't bring one. And says, uh, "Oh well, if we're gonna get beer, I don't have any cash on me." Yeah, no, I just spent a lot of money on vacation, and my yeah, wine fridge. I, you know, about buying wine is that you buy it to enjoy it for a specific, exactly. You know, reason or specific exactly. yeah, meal like or returning specific. to the Rob Saul show after a vacation. <laughs> But only if you had the right pairing. See, that's exactly. the thing is I'm yeah. really starting to oh, get crazy. Oh. Yeah. I'm really starting to get crazy because I've been spending so much time up in the San Inez Valley. You didn't get down to the San Inez Valley, did you? No. Nope. It's a little bit further south, so it's about 30 minutes north of Santa Barbara. But it's cr- like because of the climate and the way that the mountains run, there's all these crazy microclimates that are going on that huh. lend themselves to four different, four different kinds of grapes at least. And people there are way into it. And, you know, there, there's a lot of exciting things happening in California. A lot of, a lot of dual crop planting, you know, grapes and other green right, yeah. uh, products. And everybody loves each other because it's all organic. <laughs> it's so <laughs> California. <laughs> Let me just it's say, really quite a scream, you know. But When I was in California, yeah, I had a lot of great wine in actual wine country. The best wine yep. that I had, I went up to, it was called Carmel by the Sea. It, it's right oh, close yeah, to yeah. where Carmel. Pebble Beach is, mm-hmm. um, about like an hour south of San Francisco. Um, he usually likes mm-hmm. the Carmel by the Sea men. <laughs> hey, but, but, um, Rob, yeah, Rob Stevie is in the room. Yeah. We, went, we went to one winery or tasting room in the city it was called galante and they gave us a bunch of wines to taste and they were okay like they weren't great i i didn't i I wasn't inclined to buy any and right as i was Mm. i was getting up to look at the stock they had on 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 the walls they had wine bottles from 1996 there and like 94 it was insane and i'm looking at it like and I look at the person behind the counter like, is this real? And she's like, yeah, we actually have one of our library 96 Cabernets here to taste if you'd like. How and much I, and, is a bottle of that? Oh, man. We're getting there. Thousands? No. Which was insane. But um, she she uh, pours me a glass of this 96 Reserve Cabernet. 1996. Mm. And it mm-hmm. was the most phenomenal wine I've ever had. It nice. was incredible. And very, it very was, nice. And the, the best part was it was dirt cheap for that kind of quality. Yeah, I, you got to love that. I it feel like uh, $130. I feel like, That's Owen, it. maybe you should get in the, uh, uh, since you're out there in the wine business, I could already see a, a Mama Cass Sauvignon Blanc. Hey. Well, you know, it's funny that you would say that because here's my plan. 
I have a five-year plan. Is okay. anybody interested in my five-year plan? I am. Give a shit. I am. I, I am. do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go ahead. My five-year go to, plan. Go to the right platform. I want it. I want my. Well, my son will be in college in a couple of years. Believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. And he um, outgrew his bed, so you gotta, you know, <laughs> it'll, you gotta yeah, send him somewhere. Be, you know, then I got him a bed. You know, <laughs> you know within a few years, I don't. I feel like I don't really need to live in LA anymore. You know, oh. and so well, doesn't I'm thinking, ja- doesn't I'm, doesn't Jack sell need my to? House and, what doesn't Jack need to? He's in the in the music business and. Yeah, yeah, but we, you know, if things continue to go well, then hopefully we would be able to maybe keep this place, uh-huh. um, because you know we we couldn't rent something for our mortgage payment. We couldn't even go rent an apartment for what our mortgage payment is mm-hmm. on this house because we've owned it for so long. Yeah. Um, but I'd lo- I just want to get out of the city, you know. And my plan is yeah. to I I want to get my aunt, um, to sell her place in New England. And, you know, move. So I want to get some place up, you know, north of Santa Barbara, probably in the in the San Inez Valley. And, you know, grow. Grow some grapes. Sell them. Mm-hmm. You know, get the agricultural license and all the tax credits you get for having agriculture on your land. And um, <laughs> half pot, half mm-hmm. grape. I'm good to go. <laughs> okay, let, okay, let me just say that Smoke sounds and drink like a, myself off into the next that you know, sounds, four years of my life, and I think that's genius. That dream like a little, a great dream a one idea. I'm just saying you need to be fucking loaded in order to actually get the ground in which to in which to grow. And oh, well, and, and if you're you loaded to enough the, the to right, buy it, then you're loaded the, enough to be happy. You know, the, <laughs> the people that are doing this up there are so nuts. I mean, they have, you know, they've got people that, that do all this shit right, you know. So, yeah, you got to have the money to hire the right people to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I certainly don't know how to do it, but I, I know that I want to, you know. Um, I, I just kind of don't want to live in a city where I can't see the stars. Right. You know, yeah. I, I, just, I just look at gross homeless people all the time, and I'm not interested I want to look at the stars. Oh, homeless people. And not, yeah. and not Hollywood stars. <laughs> yeah. Hollywood stars, yeah. Well, that's but, a, you that's know. A, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's all good. That's my five-year plan. So if yeah. anybody you know, wants to help well, do it, let me know. <laughs> sounds, they want sounds, to make it happen, that's so, my okay. plan. So, uh, well, so. While, while you're on the line, uh, is there anything uh, that you want to uh, – uh, plug or promote? How's the uh, Mama and the Papa's uh, website? Are you still doing? Uh, still working with that? And... We, yeah. Well, we, you know, we signed our our deal with our new manager, and they're they're, um, you know, putting together <clears throat> they put together our social media. So they started the social media campaign stuff, which is really cool to get to watch the you know pe- the followers on Twitter. Actually, we cracked two hundred amazing um, <laughs> you think that we'd have more but we don't yeah the, um now is it but, verified you know, can you get it, it is it verified uh that one uh twitter the twitter is not verified can we um, get it verified Insta- because you know. i don't i oh actually you know what I'll, hold on. It, it might be i have to i have to look it's mama's papa's music is the is the twitter Mm-hmm. The Twitter. I, I sound like the oldest person. It's on the Twitter. <laughs> it's on the Twitter. I think it may it's be on the face Twitter. place too. I just, I just want to buy thing, some you know, land and grow grapes. It's on the Twitter. It's on the face gram. It's on the my place. <laughs> it's on the my place. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. It's just the way it is. But it's it's nice, you know. I yeah, Instagram is, is um Instagram is verified. Twitter is not verified. Well yeah. You gotta but get verified on Twitter. Be-